Hockey, it's what we do in Canada. This is like Torino, the gold medal matchup all over again. Finland, Sweden, Saku Koivu, Matt Sundin. Yeah. What goes on inside the room and inside the glass tonight is pretty special. Tom Cochran to kickstart Hockey Night in Canada, the Habs and the Leafs, with the party ain't over yet. of Petrus. Steve, if you're watching, Don's in love with you right now. 682nd meeting all time. 82nd game of the year for the two teams. Eighth meeting of the season. Blah, blah, right? The Habs and the Leafs. It's all come down to this. Don Sherry and all, all his right. friends. Good evening. All right, Steve, the Greek did a great job. Who would ever think coming down to the last game? I'll tell you, this is more exciting to us than the Stanley Cup seventh game for as far as I'm concerned. Now, they got to get on Huey fast. Let's face it, he has the plates in February. Got to get him on fast. Uh, no penalties. They've got the second, Montreal's got the second best uh, uh, penalty power play, and we've got the worst. Toronto's got the, Toronto got the worst. So all I got to say is, this is better than Hollywood. They'd come down, winner take all. Let's get it going. Toronto's defense, Don, has been outstanding. You can't hear me, I'm sure. Toronto's D has been outstanding. They've been scoring all the goals. Montreal's got that great speed. They move the buck out of their own end. They've added Alexander. Harris Jogan tonight up on the big line with Ryder and Koivu. What has uh, Montreal got to do? They win, they're in. Well, Islanders won today, so Toronto The long as it goes, the long as it goes, the better off it is for Montreal. Like I say, let it go like this. But let's get, let's lay the cards on the table. There's an awful lot of passengers been on Toronto. Somebody's got to step up here. I don't know how they're winning the game. Let's get off Ray Croft and let's get Get it going. We can hardly wait. All right. Bob Cole, Harry Neal in the Foster Hewitt gondola. Bruce Rainey on the other side of the break. Game 82. Enjoy. This portion of Hockey Night in Canada on CBC is brought to you by Ford. Built for life in Canada. Inspiration. Where does it come from? Is it as simple as wanting to be the best? Or is it a drive to change the game? Wherever it is, find your inspiration. And you'll find greatness. Peter 
Here's true love Asian salad. Craft your salad. What did you see? You see things before they happen. I have no idea how, but I can't. There is a nuclear bomb somewhere in the United States. Find it. And do exactly what I say. I'll save your life. I don't want you to die. Next. It's happening. When? Now. In theaters April 27th. Big start, I come on. Big first, man. Let's go, guys. Street Toronto today. Ticket brokers getting $850 to $1,000 for a gold ticket here at ACC. Look at the great stuff you get at home for free. For what it's worth, the stats show Toronto has won eight straight here at ACC. The Canadians have lost eight of their last ten on the road. It all comes down to game number 82 for each team. What a mood at the Air Canada Centre. The Essentials with the National Anthem. A playoff spot on the line at ACC. set to rock to the booth, Bob Cole and Harry Neal. Good evening, everybody. This has always been a great rivalry. And tonight, one of the biggest games ever for the Habs and the Leafs. This is a huge test for Cristobal Louis. He hasn't had a start since Valentine's Day. He played the third period against the New York Rangers on Thursday. Eight shots, stop them all. Andrew Raycroft, the win tonight would give him 38 wins. 
the most by a Leaf goalie in one season, and what a win it would be for the Leafs. Referees, that's Rob Schick. And with him, Dave Jackson, the linesman Greg Daborski, Scott Briscoll. And we are underway with the Canadians in white, the Leafs in the dark blue jerseys, and down the ice to the Leaf goalie, it goes right off the bat. Pavale and Kavina, the Leaf defensemen, get the play going for Sundin and for Paul and Panikarovsky, and the crowd is going nuts already. A capacity house, of course, at the Air Canada Centre, and this, as we said, is the biggest game of the year so far. No doubt about that. Guy Carbono, I think, has made a good decision on Hue. The old comment in a crisis, the most daring course is often the safest. This guy has played 20 minutes since February 14th, but they all tell me he's looked great in practice. They stop one by Toronto's well one. First shot on goal for Hue, and he stopped that with a stick. Canadians back it up in the zone. 51 as Bouillon shot the puck off the boards and got it out, and it's sucked back in by Toronto. They want to start hard and well. And the Canadians, of course, want to do something similar, and they get it across center, was tipped there. And down the ice it goes, and they're in after it on the good fork shot. Out through the crease, and the goalie didn't see it come out, but the Leafs have it, and away they go. Down across the line is Kilger, and got in there with a shot. And again, it's a stick save by Lule, and he'll hang on to it in the blue ice. Pretty good start to this one. They're heated up. Two veteran referees, and they get them apart early. Well, both teams have got to be careful on penalties, especially with the Montreal power play. Raycroft, who has trouble handling the puck outside the crease, and he gets away with one there. Kilgar and Komisarik are in the box for that after the whistle shoving match behind the Montreal net. We haven't played a minute yet. First penalty is called, and there's Kilgar. Paul Maurice, the Leaf coach. Four on four. The Leafs are seven goals, four uh, and two against Montreal's four, four and seven against. And the Canadians get the puck on this face off. And here they come. In over the line on this right side. A little bit too far to be handled by Markov, who was up on the play. Back count for McCabe. Chopped to the center. And for Pond going in with Sundin. Gets set. And it was offside. Late whistle. Couldn't hear it. And the players took a while to slow it down. Well, Matt Sundin is having an awful time scoring goals. He's racking up some points, as you can see, in the last 19 games. One goal in 91 shots, and he can shoot the puck. That's an amazing statistic. Cave slipped it back as Sundin won the draw. Waited near center ice, nearly got caught. Canadian player up on him very close, Thomas Placanitz. Canadians get it again. Higgins is with Placanitz, and here they come. The Habs move it up to center, and it's chopped in from center ice by Sore. That hot scoring defenseman for the Canadians, number 44. And Leafs get the puck. Just underway, coming up to two minutes and no score yet. Four on four right here. Here's Steen coming in too far for a shot. Bad angle. Handles the puck well, though, off the boards. Left-handed. First penalty coming up on a power play situation. Steen with the puck. The goalie out at the other end. He got a shot. And Uwe stopped that. The Canadians touch it. Here comes the whistle. Here's the first power play in the hockey game. And a penalty when you're playing four on four is a lot more dangerous for your penalty killers. And now it's four on three with the Leafs. Pekanic gets a tripping penalty on Steen right there. Not two feet away from the referee. Pekanic's gone on that hook. 2.02 is the time. Toronto power play, 11 for 36 versus Montreal this season. It's a whopping 30% or more. The Leafs pass it around now on a four on three situation. This is the best you can get. And here's Sunday outside of the post for that shot. Off the boards, it's kept in at the line by McCabe. Winds up as Carberley is set to pass it back to him. He comes himself to Sunday. Carberley! Shot to stop. Sundin left it, and McCabe got it back to Carberley. There's Sundin! 
Luay looks pretty sharp. He moved from post to post and made two saves there. Well, Darcy Tucker's going to the front of the net, and if Coverley shoots it, he wants to screen it or tip it. And the same thing if Sundin shoots it. And here's the Sundin shot coming right up. There's the Coverley shot. And the Sundin shot came up right after that, and Tucker stays right there looking for a rebound. Sundin stays on to try and win this one on the four and three situation, and he won it. McCabe had to turn back, couldn't get ready for a shot. Coverley stalls, gives it to him. McCabe ready. He's in. Again, Carberle, Sundin, and McCabe. Three of them are out there. Centering pass. That's broken up and cleared away to the corner. Bouillon got it on the glass and down the ice. Now it's five on four as the first two penalties are up. And a minute left of McConnell's penalty. Shot in, and the Canadians pick it up and do not get it out by McCabe. Kept into the corner. That's Tucker. He's with Wellwood. Back out here, Sundin again to the blue line. Now McCabe, they cover him well out there. Coverley, they don't want McCabe shooting. Sundin, that's a nice save by the right pad of Uway. Got down and made a nice stop on that shot by Matt Sundin. Five stops already by Uway on the power play situation. And now they're up again, the Leafs are. Konakorowski threw it into the middle. Back to the line, Polyakovo dealt it off, and he gets it again. He's got a good shot, and that's the point of the net. He did get it away and got all of it. Now another one, that didn't come off, and the Canadians are going to clear it ahead. They tried to set it up on the wing, and it didn't work. Markov knocked it down, dumped it down, pushed it ahead. Five seconds left on this power play for Toronto. And the Leafs ran over the line, the power play is over. But Connets is on the ice, they killed it off. Six shots, mind you, on Cristobal away. His first game since February 14th. He's practiced hard for two weeks and looked sharp. So the players were saying today, he was tested against the Rangers with eight shots and he made saves on all of them. Now the league spread out, coming in hard again. Another save by Uwe, he's down, he stops another one. Brother of the Leafs are pouring everything at him. They got an early lead in this important hockey game. Played off the glass again. The Canadians are on their heels. The Leafs are on their toes, and it's knocked in deep again. And the Canadians come back for it. There's Kovalev on the ice. He looks to get a pass while he was moving. He didn't get it, so he's gone to the bench now on a change. Knocked down at center. The Canadians pick it up. Johnson on the boards and took a hit. Cole hit him. Johnson went in and knocked one down behind the net. Fell, got back up. And he's having a tough time with White on him. Got it back to him. The Leafs break it up and get it out. Cole poked at it and didn't get it too far. Things changing quickly. Pangia. Arrow coming in, spinning back. Long pass, hopped away from Antropov. He took the shot as he hit off the boards. The way is alive and well for the Canadians. 12-1 are the shots for the Leafs, and Huey's made a half a dozen big-time saves. And here is a little summary of his work in the first five and a half minutes. If you were wondering if he was stale, this will answer your question. Yeah, right. He's been very sharp. Canadians get the puck up the center. Looks, looks dangerous, but Higgins right in. And he whipped it hard and wide of the net. Going for the far side. Tucker got it at center and tossed one into the Canadian zone. Crowd buzzing on that first break for Montreal's Higgins. He's a sharpshooter, too, for the Canadians. But he couldn't score that time. He played six minutes now of the first. There's no score. This big tilt tonight here at the Air Canada Center in Toronto. Canadians are offside. Wow, what a night it's shaping up to be. What a night. Bud Light presents blatant marketing ploys. During the playoffs, companies like to entice you with free hockey stuff. Not official. Weird. So sad. Blade employee? Totally. But if you're giving away free stuff, make it worth keeping. 
That's why Bud Light, proud sponsor of the NHL, is giving away one of 18 official NHL Stanley Cup champions hats, in specially marked cases of Bud Light. Great hat, great beer, you can't lose. Must be legal drinking age, no purchase required. With the innovative Rona by Design concept, it's almost that simple. Choose from among the latest in bathroom styles to suit your tastes. Then bring your dream to life with our Rona experts. Rona by Design, from the Canadian how-to people. Oh, lucky. Love Tim Hortons donuts. Oh, those aren't just any donuts. They're the new triple chocolate donuts. What? But I'm the chocolate king. Oh, yeah, and they're super chocolatey, too, with the filling and the icing, and there's even more chocolatey drizzle on top of that. It's irresistibly chocolatey at Tim Hortons with our triple chocolate baked goods. Always fresh, always Tim Hortons. Back with an update from TD Bank North in Boston. The Ottawa Senators trying to nail down home ice advantage in their series versus Pittsburgh. They were down 1-0 on a goal by Marco Sturm. Mike Comrie squared it with this goal from Peter Schaefer. I wonder if Tim Thomas saw Roberto Luongo get the delay of game penalty and played it. In any event, 1-1 there, and then Peter Callis for Boston puts the Bruins back on top. So they have a 2-1 lead in the first period there, Bob and Harry. Thank you, Ron. We're nearing the seven-minute mark of the first period here. There's no score in this game yet. The shots are 12 1 for Toronto. So you wondered about Cristobal Lue. Forget about that. Shot down the ice. There'll be no icing. Lue out to play. Gave it away in the corner just about. Tipped on the boards, but Koliakovo made a good play, pinching in to keep it in. Koliakovo fell. Play goes right on as he was dumped. Now Sundin got a hold of it and flipped it into the corner. Francis Bouillon. Around the net to this near side, it's cleared back out. Ryder from center to shoot in. Cross ice, far side. Tony Akimo was back. So was Stajan. The Leafs get it ahead, nearly a break pass. Down the ice for Steen. He missed it. Uwe played it around his own goal. Kept in by Deverall. Shot to the far side, and Kovalev for the Canadians. Made a move on it. He's not going to pass it. Got it in front to Stajan. Staging around the net, first shot stopped. Now another one coming up, and that was missed. And it got by everybody down the ice. Kovalev with a big giveaway in his own zone. No damage done, however. No score, nearing eight minutes. Leaks come up again. They are looking the shocker of the two teams so far. Now turning back up Lapierre for the Canadians. On the boards, it's in deep. Pushed away by Raycroft. Toronto do not move on it right away. Now they do and get it up and down the ice. And there's Mataglia. Knocked it down. Trying to set one up. He comes himself. Shot a step by Uwe. All Toronto so far. Nothing to show for it. There's no score. Now a pass to Rob. There's a score. The first one of the game. And you knew it had to come. But Taglia for the Maple Leafs. It's his 198th career point with that goal. And the Leafs have been all over Montreal. And UA has been the difference. But finally gives one up. Partially screened by Commissar. I don't think UA saw the whole shot. It may have even hit Commissar and went in. A tremendous start for the Maple Leafs in this all-important game. The last one in the regular season for these two teams. Pataglia watching the replay in the big clock at center ice and enjoying this moment. Uwe has been great. But he couldn't stop that one. One to nothing. Toronto in front. So the Canadians on their heels for the better part of the first half of this opening period. They played eight minutes now. Back to the line. Bouillon's shot is blocked easily by Tucker. He's out with Kilger. 
And Kilger is racing in over the line and took a shot himself. Knocked down! Tucker came close to knocking in a rebound. Back down to the blue line and cleared away by Gustitsen. Canadians the other way. And that's loved by Raycroft. He had some difficulty hanging on. They cleared it, but the Canadians are fighting hard to come back now. That is Higgins after the puck, and he has it. Tried to come out, and he was stopped by Pavel Kubina, who got it ahead. And the Leafs are up the center, and here's a long shot. Didn't get more than 10 feet because it hit Soray. Canadians play back up. They're changing as the play goes on. The Leafs are on the puck. Boyer, they're driving hard. Andropov took it. A little back pass didn't quite work. And now here's Panikarovsky, and in there behind the net, Sundin. Set up by Sundin, but Uwe is ever so sharp. He's out again. Uwe, the wraparound stop. And the Leafs are all over Montreal in the early going of this one. Sundin behind the net again, trying to set it up. Here he comes. Sundin backhand pass. That stopped. It's not out yet. Now it's cleared off the boards and down the ice. All Toronto in the early part of this hockey game. We have not reached the halfway mark yet. And the shots are 19 to 2 for the Maple Leafs. They're leading one to nothing. Uwe flipped it on the boards, and the Canadians. Their heads are spinning. I know they are. You have to feel both teams would have uh, some players showing nervousness. But this Leaf team has come out like I don't think I've seen them this year so far. They're all firing on all cylinders. Antipov, who's got seven goals in the last 16 games and a career high of goals, nearly scored another one as Huey makes a great stop with his stick on that one. They off one by Toronto again, but backing off as Carverley allowing Ryder to come in. Ryder put it back and took a shot, rebound, and it's knocked away from in front of the net, and the net is knocked off the mornings, and that stops the play. The Taglia. From Pirol and Pole at 7.53. Well, Montreal's goal scoring leader, Michael Ryder, who has 27, nearly made it 28. A good stop from the top of the circle by Raycroft. And the rebound was fat and juicy, but the Leafs got a hold of it first. And here's the delay as Cabina kicks the net off the hinge. Canadians test him again. They crop made that stop, and the puck is back out to center ice. Yes, Eric made the first play. Koivu couldn't hang on to it very long. But Taglia, the goal scorer, is up again, circling in the blue line. Waiting for help, fired it in front of the net. That hit a stick and went away from the goal and cleared out by Montreal. Coming away is Perichok, and he got as far as center. That line is changing now and headed off. And the Leafs put Taglia in again. Leaving it for Perrault, who dances away from Anasteric. Made a good move back there and got it out to the Taglia. He was hungry for another one, took a shot that went off a skate. Bouillon has it. Shot it behind the net. We're all having a difficult time, to say the least, getting organized. Kovalev himself. Pass. Got by everybody. Up there in the play was Laton Dress and didn't get the pass going at the blue line. Shot away by the Leafs down the ice. We are back. 1-0 Toronto Leafs. 9.05 left in the first. Kovalev can't handle that. Gill backed up a little bit. And now White flipped the high one up across the Montreal blue line. Broken up. Kilger grabbed it and lost it. And the Canadians come in again. Turning back with it as Kostitsen. Hangs on to it. Left it at the line. Nice play. That was. Got in front. Higgins can't handle the pass. He was open in front of the net. And now, Dandenau Brown drives one, and that was into a pair of legs in front of the net. Along into Koliakovo, and he cleared it out. Up they come again, the Maple Leafs. Here's the shot. That stopped as Andropov came in on his wrong wing and grilled it. And it back up the other way, Dandenau. Boy, the pace is wicked. In over the line. That'll slow it. They're offside. Three on two. And they were offside on that rush. One nothing, Toronto. How do you make your truck your truck?
choose $1,000 worth of no extra charge genuine Ford accessories and transform it during the custom truck event only at your Ontario Ford store. Hey, hey. Man, you guys got some really great deals today. Yeah, it's our holiday weekend sale. <laughs> I almost can't decide what to buy first. Yeah, that's what it's like at the holiday weekend sale. But how do you guys afford such low prices with the holiday weekend sale? Oh, we just shoot one commercial and then we run it again for every sale, like this one. The holiday weekend sale. <sighs> Save now on a huge selection of the latest technology. Looking for the right mortgage? Come to TD Canada Trust, where we'll help you find a mortgage that has everything you're looking for. Which could make all the difference. I'm so excited, and I just can't hide it. Get the mortgage that's right for you. TD Canada Trust. Banking can be this comfortable. In Boston, the Ottawa Senators down 2-1 to one to the Bruins, but draw even. This shot by Daniel Alfredson is redirected by Jason Spezza. They've given it now to Spezza, his 33rd of the year. Alfredson and Phillips will draw assists 2-2 two -two there. Paul Maurice did a nice job getting this team ready to play by the way things have gone in the first 12 minutes. It's been all Toronto in the first 12 minutes. They have the only goal, only one to show. Other efforts around Cristobal Lue, who's been sensational for the Canadians. His first game back. And out since Valentine's Day. A little start in New York against the Rangers in the third period on Thursday night. Stopped eight shots. And the game was reached by that time. The Indians lost it. So here we are. And over the line is Higgins. Made a big ball. It's in. He scores. What a goal by Higgins. Higgins gets his 21st goal. And he deked the uniform off Thomas Coberley, who had to come out at him instead of backing in. And you're going to see what happens. First of all, he fights past the Leaf player there. Coberley comes out at him. And anybody who can handle the puck will beat a defenseman who roars out at him when he's got the whole rink to play in. Sabina loses him. Coverley gets beaten. It's 1 1. What a goal by Chris Higgins. He had a break earlier in this period and missed the net. But on this one, his 21st goal of the season, it was a perfect play. Racing in, made a great deke, as Harry mentioned, and beat Raycroft. It's 1 1 now. So the Canadians might come around after that. An outshot 20 to 5 by the Maple Leafs. Higgins' goal was unassisted, his 21st of the season, at 12 15 of this opening period. Battle along the boards. The puck is finally out. Chopped down the ice. Sheldon Sure. Leafs are changing. The puck shot into the Toronto zone. And McKay leaves it for Koliakovo. He steps up to center ice. He's going to shoot it in from there. Came off a Canadian stick and got in deep around the net. It goes. And the Leafs are in after it first. Picking it up on the move is Bataglia. The leap goal scorer got it back into the corner, but that was a giveaway. Nearly got it back. Tossed up high on the boards. And near the line was McKay, who shot it ahead. Leafs keep it in. Little pass on the backhand side for Bataglia. Couldn't handle that. Strike for the Canadians. Lifting on the center, and that's Ryder again. He had a good chance earlier. Now he's got another coming up. Low shot. Big rebound. Leafs grab it, and away they go. Shot down by Tucker at center ice, and they get up over the line. Here's Tucker. Coming in, getting set now. And the shot, it went high and off the glass and ricochets all the way back out to center ice. Hill picks it up and dumps it back in for the Maple Leafs with six minutes left to play. And this the first period, a 1-1 tie. Canadians can get the playoff spot for the win tonight. That shot by LaPierre was gloved easily by Raycroft. That's Ron Dress. 
and White are having a battle after the whistle, and they can go to the box for doing it if they're not careful. Toronto has to win tonight and hope for an Islanders loss tomorrow for the playoffs. Imagine the Stanley Cup, Mark Messier, a new hockey shrine from CBC's Hockey Night in Canada, and the ultimate playoff party from Pepsi, Lay's, and Gatorade. <laughs> this better be good. <gasps> Have you met my friend Stanley? For your chance to win and full contest details, go to cbc.ca slash bring home the cup and show us how you watch the playoffs. Some restrictions and conditions apply. So, are you going to let us in? Here later. Welcome to You Do Voodoo. We get thousands of orders online for cheating boyfriends, <laughs> business partners. Thing is, they're heat sense. No problem. We ship coast to coast. Coast to coast. Coast to coast. Pure Later's Canada's largest courier. Delivered by 9 a.m.? Overnight guarantee. When you ship with Pure Later, out of the ordinary is never out of the question. Pure Later, where business is going. From the far reaches of the Orient comes an age-old recipe passed down from generation to generation. Introducing Cheetah Power Surge Caffeine-Free Energy Drink. Here's the deal. Cheetah Power Surge is an all-natural blend of Chinese ginseng and royal jelly that gives you an all-natural burst of energy without the caffeine crash. Feel refreshed and revived with Cheetah Power Surge Energy Drink. Hey, life moves pretty fast. Cheetah helps you keep up. Cheetah Power Surge Caffeine-Free Energy Drink. <laughs> Grab it. They're going fast. Bates Spectacular opened the scoring with his first goal in 19 games and 12th of the season on a shot that I think is partially screened by Komisarik. And then Higgins fights by the Leaf defenseman and then deeks Coverley and makes no mistake to score. Beat Kubina on the boards first and then his partner Coverley. Tucker takes that pass and can't move. Coverley comes back to pick it up. Shot it around the board. Stopped by the Canadians at the line again. Sorry went a little bit too high for that. That'll be brought back out. 5.38 remaining in this, the first period. And that was so Higgins. One tie. That was Higgins' 23rd point on the road versus 13 at home. Coaches really like those guys who can score more on the road than at home. Face off, as you see, just outside the Maple Leaf blue line. And the Canadians win the draw. They've been losing many in this first period when the Leafs really took over from the start. Now the fans have come around, especially since Higgins got that break and scored on the system. Centered again, and another face off in the zone because Raycroft decided he'd smother it. Cover up. Well, Sheldon Surrey leads the team in power play goals, game-winning goals, shots on goal, and he scored his 19th power play goal on Thursday night to break a record. He's tied for third for defenseman points, second for power play goals, and fourth for power play points. What an offensive year Sheldon Surrey's having. They saw it comes right to the net. Batted away by McKay, but that didn't get out. So, Polyakovo tries it, got it up to Panikorovsky. He did poke it away to McCabe at center, and they come in over the line, but they're offside. Sundin on this near wing was offside. Tomorrow night on CBC, don't miss part one of The Great War, a remarkable documentary that brings together 150 descendants of Canada's first World War soldiers to reenact their ancestors' battles and provides a deep sense of this defining event Canada's past. CBC's comprehensive Vimy coverage continues with part one of the Great War tomorrow at 8 on CBC. 1-1 one, one tie here in the first period with exactly five minutes left. Leeds got the first goal. Canadians tied it a few minutes ago. Their stage and centering of steam was open but couldn't handle the pass. Harley from center ice had to back off. He has Johnson all over him. Now it's off a stick at the Canadians' bench, and that's where it ends up. Well, Toronto has an impressive record here at the Air Canada Centre against Montreal since this building was open. 15-5-1. 10-5 at 
Tanglia, his 12th from Parole and Pole at 7.53. And then Higgins on a great solo effort at 12.15, his 21st. 1-1. One, one. Canadians can't get the puck out of the zone. Backing up is the captain, Poivu. Two leaps on him and he lost the puck. White was hit. Poivu can't stop it. Hanukarovsky can't center it. Suri covered up at the goalie's right and he decides to carry it out. Got across center somehow and chopped the puck in for the Canadians. Hill was back. Poivu took it from him. Sundin covered his man. Puck is jammed right there in Sundin's escape. He knocked it loose with a stick. And now it's lifted away by Konikarovsky. That Sundin got up the center ice and comes in. Sundin ready. Passed it over and scores! Way fouled up that one. He's been great, but it got by him through his skates. Did Sundin get it? If he did, he finally catches Daryl Sittler. 389 goals as a Maple Leaf. And I don't think anyone else touched it. Let's have a look. This is a milestone goal if Sundin gets it. And did it hit Antropov's stick? Antropov and Monikarovsky have been trying to get Sundin this goal if it is, but I think it hit Antropov's stick. Or was it the Montreal Canadian defenseman Ulan stick? Maybe not Antropod's stick. Right. That was very close, and we'll show you one more time. No, I think Antropod's stick, he's going to try to give it to the captain, but I don't know whether the scorers will. They have it posted as Nick Antropod's goal. It is 2-1 Toronto. Toronto is 18 to the yes. Antropod gets the goal that gives the Leafs the lead again. It's their second lead of the period. Sundin shoots the puck at the net, or was it a pass? And Antropov just gets his stick on it enough to slip it between the legs of Huey, who I'm sure would like to try that save again. Sundin and Ponikarovsky getting the assists on the Antropov goal at 16.09 to give the Leafs a 2-1 lead. 3.41 now left in the period. Here's the face-off, one by the halves. Dumped the head to the corner. Kind of centered it. Too hot to handle. It was a high pass. And Higgins couldn't knock it down. Higgins has it. Back up, he tried to pass and got in over the line himself. Took a shot. Boy, that wrist shot was right on. And he got it away quickly, and Raycroft had the angle on it. The Leafs had a chance to get that puck deep in front of the Montreal bench and didn't. And as a result, Higgins got a chance to score. So the faceoff is coming to the right of Andrew Raycroft. 21 away of the shots in favor of Toronto. Away. Slipped up a little, wasn't covering on that far side. Short side of the net, Antropov had it come off his stick and gently threw a skates to give the Leafs the lead. Shorey back there again. Devereaux got the puck. Shorey got it back just for a second and lost it. Steen took the shot, that was blocked, didn't reach the netminder. And it floats out to center ice again. Toronto taking the game with the Montreal Canadiens, even though it's just a one-goal spread at the moment. Under three minutes left in the first period. And they have been pounding the puck at Cristobal Louay. Here comes Kilger. He tried to shoot it from a sharp angle. That was stopped. Tucker, good forecheck to keep it in. And it's outside the line as White failed to hang on to it. Leafs are back on side and come after the Canadians again. Are moving slowly for it. Sorry, took his dead time and gave it a Dandenau. Then he had to hurry and got it high in the glass. It's knocked down at the line and kept on side by Toronto. Good play by Gill. Centering pass got in front. White foul. And the Canadians finally get the puck up and out of the zone, even though Dandenau took a hit. Here's Johnson coming in. That's stopped by Raycroft. It's stopped over there by Roddick Bonk, and he kept it in, but there's White again. Couldn't get it by Bonk, who trapped it. Johnson fell. Bond got it on a skate. 
And the play is stopped with 149 left to play. We have a penalty in the first coming period. Up. Johnson had a real good opportunity to tie this hockey game up. He has got one goal in the last 16 games and nearly snuck that one by goaltender Raycroft. Referee signaled a penalty, but I don't know. See anybody in going to the box. Bonk got hit in the face with the puck that came around the glass that before that little skirmish by the boards. There will be a penalty. I do believe that Jackson has made a sign that one of the Canadians must come to the penalty box. And well, that's was, what's about to happen. It was during that scrum along the boards, halfway out of the leaf zone, Kostitsin. The rookie is in the box with 149 left in the period and here's a chance for the Maple Leafs to get a more comfortable lead. They're ahead two to one. Montreal's Montreal killed off 15 straight penalties. Two minutes for holding the stick. Time of the penalty 1811. The Canadians were at a call. Leafs get the face off and get the puck in deep right off the bat. The Canadians will send them back. Second power play of this hockey game. They're coming up. Okay, hands it off. Well, it takes it off the boards and has to spin back with it. Now he makes a move for the net. Gets in front himself. Just missed it. Here comes the shot. Uwe got a little piece of that. And Sundin fed it ahead. Right in front was well wooden. He couldn't get control of it before Commissary knocked it away from him. Last minute of play in the first Haberley in the final minute of the first period. Stalls for a bit of time. Now everybody is ready, and here they go. Up over the line with Sundin bringing the puck in. Back that up to Carberley again. Carberley up the line. Looks to Sundin. Here it comes to him. Sundin grabbed it, throw it ahead. Well, one. Back to Sundin. Now the shot. That's blocked by Uwe. It came from Carberley at the blue line, and he drilled a hard one. Well, the Leafs certainly are moving that puck pretty smartly on the power play, and they're getting someone in front of the net most of the time, which is something they haven't been doing very often. And Tucker, you can see, is causing a problem for the Montreal defenseman, and two Leafs are looking for the tip-in, but neither can get it. Only 39 seconds remaining in the period. Okay. On the back pass. Tucker off a little bit, now coming on to McCabe again. He gives it to Coverley. Sundin, three of them out of the blue line. Now it goes in deep, and here's Sundin again. He has room for a shot, but just elects not to. Now maybe. No, it goes to the line. Okay, bad angle. Haberley gets set again for Sundin. The shot. Stopped by Uwe. Rebound. Near away. Tucker had the open net, but was in too far. And it's broken up and sent back out and down the ice. That'll do it. For this first period. Good one by the Maple Leafs. No question about that. Out shooting Montreal 23 to 9. They have two goals. The Canadians have one. Don Cherry standing by in the coach's corner, and Ron, of course, will be with you in a moment. After one period, the Leafs two, the Canadians one. Up today and save with your $300 Mad Money bonus check during a legendary Midnight Madness sale at the Brick. This weekend, the sale price is throughout the store. Plus, you don't pay for 15 months. The Brick. Open until midnight Saturday. Flying to the same places over and over? Check out our new flight passes. Good for multiple flights. Air Canada. The freedom to fly your own way. It's human blood, the whole damn river. Folks are worried that this is a plague. We are witnessing biblical events. Open the door, Catherine, and you'll believe it. What are you doing? Ending this. The Weeping, now playing. We wanted a risky paint color. Fiesta Tangerine, but that's not us. We thought about doing something wild in the dining room. But that's not us. <laughs> we wanted to go variable with our mortgage, but... Actually, with an RBC Homeline plan, you can have the security of a fixed rate and the savings of a variable rate. That's a home improvement we can live with. <laughs> yeah, we're living on the edge. Having the best of both kinds of mortgages, that's how RBC put us first. 
Get our best price ever on this top grain leather seating reclining sofa during the reclining sofa sale at The Brick. For limited time, it's only $9.99. Plus, you don't pay for 15 months. For reclining sofas, nobody beats The Brick. The innovative Rona by Design concept, it's almost that simple. Choose from among the latest in home facade styles to suit your tastes. Then bring your dream to life with our Rona experts. Rona by Design, from the Canadian how-to people. Kingbird, and if that mockingbird don't sing, Daddy's gonna buy you a diamond. Why do WestJetters care so much? Because we're also WestJet owners. Coach's Corner with Ron McLean and Don Cherry. Brought to you by Moore's Clothing for Men. might not be made for you. But our big and tall section is. Moore's has a wide selection of big and tall clothing, from suits and sport coats to sportswear and outerwear at prices that won't knock you out. Moore's, well-made, well-priced, well-dressed. Back at Studio 42. Yes. Yeah, where are we? CBC, 10th yeah, floor. Great. All right, go ahead. It's uh, two to one. Now, yes. you're not blaming Hugh Ayer, and I, I'm not suggesting for a minute, but I wondered when Guy Carboneau put him in as the backup the other night. Halak was moving along. It's easy to second guess now. Shots now, look, here's now. why he did it, because he wanted to get him in the game. He hadn't dressed for a game. He wanted him to get his pads on in the game. He wanted to sit in the game, and the whole deal, he might get him in and get him going, and evidently it worked pretty good. Yeah. That's why he did it. Just wondering. All right. Uh, Matt Sundin, Pat Quinn used to have a theory that Matt's when he's looking for the goal... <laughs> I said I wouldn't say it, but yes. he said he'd always move outside. Well, then why outside. should I tell it then? Watch what, go ahead, I'll show you where Matt's, and I'm not telling Matt's what to do, but I've noticed, I watched him play ninth time. He's out a little bit too far here. I would get to his left a little bit and in a little bit because it's picking cherries. See that? It's easy. Get to his left a little and in a little bit. See what I'm talking about? We're going to see it again. And the guys are in front the way they should be. Over there, the power play's looking great. They should have got a couple of, see? He's picking cherries, eh? What's the guy standing in front up there? He should have been in front. Anyhow, get in a little Mets, and uh, we'll do all right. By the way, I say we, so we'll... Um, you think Toronto's trouble. winning, huh? Oh, yeah, Toronto's going to win. Don't worry about well, it. Well, I ask you the question. Which is the backbreaker, the Higgins goal or now the uh, Andropov goal? That little, uh, it's like the Brindamore goal. Well, it doesn't matter. Get it in there. He, that was something. He had the thing, except it hit a stick and went in. But I want, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to blame the two defensemen. It was, uh, he didn't dump the puck in. What he should have done, you run it right now. We're going to show the, the goal. Yeah. What Kabina should have done is uh, dump the puck in, but for some reason he went over the side. All right, a little mistake. See, so he should have got it in right there. Why he didn't? All right. Now, Caberlet comes over. He's caught between a rock and a hard place. But Caberlet, listen, if Tim and I were watching a midget hockey and a guy run over like that, we'd strike him off. You all, we, all he had to do, kids, was stand there and let it come. But it was a bing-bang play. But you don't run at a guy like that, as Harry said. This is, the, this is absolutely asinine to do a thing like that. Anyhow, you can't blame Ray Croft on that one. What a goal. There's no doubt about it. And it's funny because the Leafs went after or behind the net. Marty McSorley and I will be noticing that. I try to tell you guys, you listen to me, coach of the year and all that stuff. You never change a guy, chase a guy behind the net. Watch Pooley, pull, Pooley, chase a guy the other night. Watch, he chases him. That's what the defenseman wants him to do. He walks out. Watch what happens here. Look. Poulet's not even back. Boom. Still not back. You don't chase a guy. You go and stand in front of the net, and I'll get a few shots. Just stand and wait for the guy. He's going nowhere. See? Boom. 
Tough break for Brian McCabe on that one. That was a 2-2 goal in the Tuesday night Philadelphia. But I, all I'm just trying to throw is you don't chase a guy behind the net. Don't be a dummy. Go Doesn't and stand in front. Work. You're right. It happened again tonight. Yes. All right. Uh, Roberto Luongo and the Vancouver Canucks have won the division title. What a job by Vancouver. You know, he looks a little tired to me. He looks. He only looks sensational, but he does look a little tired. Now, Kerry Fraser called this penalty on him. Let's see the delay of the game. And th really, this is a Cheevers. Cheevers is a guy that did this. He used to come out, but now he calls the ball. What is he supposed to do? The guy's standing there. How could he get rid of the puck? Tell me how he could get rid of the puck. Here, he gets whacked. Now watch the guy come right beside him. What's he supposed to do? He got an empty net. That's absolutely ridiculous. Now, what he should have done, kids, when you come out like that, and you will get called like that, and you know how to do it, let on you don't have the puck. Just kind of, you know you got it, but go like that, and he wouldn't have called it. But when you put it down, and you do it like that, they're going to call it a lot. But, that, you know, that's a chipsy penalty. Now, they got to play Dallas as a team you like out west. I like so Dallas. That's a, that's a challenge. And tonight, Edmonton plays in Calgary. Obviously, that's their Stanley Cup, I would say. for the. Would you think for the Oilers to go in there and maybe knock off well, Calgary? Well, listen, I'm going to tell you, this will be the same thing as tonight. They're, you don't think they didn't have their stakes this afternoon, have their nap. They're ready. They'd love to knock off Calgary. I'll tell you, that, that, that'll going to be a ding-dogger. And if it comes down to it, then it'll be uh, Colorado-Calgary tomorrow for all the marbles. We got uh, another dump in? Sure. You got it? This all is right. last night. Now, like, now watch this. My favorite team. Well, not my favorite, but I like Dallas, the way they play. Now watch the Ribeiro dump the puck in. This here with seven seconds to go. Brian put, Burke. Yeah, poor Brian. Sorry, Brian. That's the way it goes. But anyhow, yeah, the night before it was an illegal stick. Tamu Solani. Solani. He was hot at Solani. Well, I thought he'd be mad at Ron Wilson. He was now hot watch at the dump in. Watch the dump in, you people that say, why give the puck away? But there it is right there. The puck comes out and in. It works all the time like that. And then you always dump it in. See, isn't it funny when they got the goalie and then they come back and won it? I tell you, Dallas Turkel, he, I think he's going to. He's got something to prove. I know they're only 100 points in that, but he's got something to prove. He has to do something in the playoffs. So watch out for Dallas. Joe Sackick, what a, what a run. Now, Joe Sackick, he could have quit a long time ago, Colorado. I, you people don't get to see him. The score was 4-2, and look what he did. I mean, just going to run it a little just to show you. What a guy. He, in the hockey news, he was picked by the players as the most respected guy, and why not? Here's a guy that never quit. Look at the nice play here. And you never see him. You know, he's, you get out west, you get in Colorado, you're sort of in between. Nobody sees you. And he's a beauty. I'm telling you, I want it. the nicest guy you'd ever meet in your life. He's just the same now as he was when he was 19, when I went out, uh, went out when they had the bus. Remember and when the those, Swift Current Broncos? Yeah, when they got bus killed. Right. And he's just as nice boy as he is now. And I'll tell you, boy, the players love him. You ever notice he never? He's like Stevie Eiserman. He never gets cheap shotted because he plays a game. He's not a wise guy, and he and you know, and he takes a hit. I mean, he takes a hit to to make a play. I, I know we're spending a lot of time on a Colorado guy, yeah. but I just have to do it because of the way he plays. BC boy, it's all right. Yeah. Gold medal showdown, Wayne Gretzky, even the puck in Salt Lake City. Yeah. Now, this is Vimy, as we all know. This is from Mel Price, uh, that RCHA, the youngest paratrooper that ever in the Canadian history. He gave me this for Vimy. And uh, by the way, I'm an honorary member of RCHA. My dad was, uh, uh, was in the RCHA, and they're over there. And my grandfather who fought in Vimy, it was from the RCHA. So it is, it is really something, when you think of it, yeah, we, we really something here. Uh, uh, when, when you think of it, what we did, uh, General Curry, it was the first time the, the uh, Canadians had ever fought together, and, they, and the British and the French took six months trying to 150,000 casualty, and in one afternoon, we took it. It is really something. I mean, that really is something. We have high school kids uh, going over there, but we had 10,000 casualties, better than one, and we had 36 killed. 3,600. 3,600, yeah. I mean. Yeah. I get a little excited talking about this. And we have a little clip here of uh, in Vimy coming up right now. And there they are. By the way, Don, uh, Peter Mansbridge and the CBC News team have a big special Monday morning coming Good. over to commemorate, and there's a great war special tomorrow. Well, night. we have those kids coming over. Yeah, the greatest field trip in the history wait, wait, of the world. We've got a little thing coming up you coming back here I want to I want to come back here and just show okay now if you could see this if you could come in cameraman I should have Steve. told you this this is my grandfather who fought in Vimy and that's when he was in the hospital uh, in France he was wounded over there and if you just go down bring it up here you see it right there the, the ports important and you and they just put down Vimy 
and they didn't have, you know, they didn't say why. He was 32 years old, and, and he volunteered with the family, as did all of the volunteers. And I'm quite proud of him that he was there. And that's the Canadian ensign, by the way. Prime Minister Harper, thank you very much for letting us fly the, the ensign, which they fought under. Thank you very much. All the veterans are very happy to come up and tell me. And, you know, they, we were... We were called by the Germans, the, Canadian, uh, the Canadians were the elite, no, elite, of, <laughs> you told me it was the elite, of, of the army. And you know they are. And we are the best back then. And now our guys and girls over in Afghanistan are the best over there. And we're proud. It's a, we're going to show it again? All well, right. Show the players. You were saying that when we were doing the opening tonight, Don, yes. you said here they are. It kind of reminds you, not comparing them for a moment to soldiers, of course, but just the whole feel in the arena tonight and the electricity around hockey, a game we love and the soldiers love. But we wouldn't be doing this if it weren't for them. Coach's Corner on Hockey Night in Canada. Brought to you by Moore's Clothing for Men. What will you do? Kill as many as I can. After? There'll be no after. Pathfinder Legend of the Ghost Warrior. Friday only in theaters. Flying to the same places over and over? Check out our new flight passes. Good for multiple flights. Air Canada, the freedom to fly your own way. Copperhead Bohemian Pilsner. There's no beer like it in the world. Ernst Benz. There's no watch like it in the world. Now, Copperhead is giving you your chance to win one of 20 limited edition Ernst Benz Copperhead watches and specially marked cases of Copperhead. Plus, you could play hockey with hockey legend Phil Esposito. Be part of something so rare that only a select few will call them their own. Enter today and you could win. Copperhead, the ultimate premium pilsner. Why settle for an ordinary yard tractor when you could have a Husqvarna? Outstanding versatility makes them the ideal working companion all year round. Raise your expectations. Visit your dealer today. Have a great experience. Bread is good, Mr. Sa. Yeah, I was just, just back there in the woods, came out through those pines. There it was, and it just took off right back over there and was gone. I tried to get my camera out to take a picture, but you can't see anything on it. I've never seen anything like it. I want one. Brought to you by Ford, built for life in Canada. Now that you can tow whatever you need and haul whatever you want, the only acceptable use of the word but is right after the word kick. The all-new 2008 Ford Super Duty. Built Ford Tough. Just enough time to say there's no score between the Rangers and Penguins. It's 2-2 in Boston. Second period in Toronto next. Are you still drinking overpriced beer? Well, now's the time to switch to Lakeport Pilsner, Lakeport Light, or Lakeport Honey Lager. We're still 2-4 for 2-4. Lakeport. Lakeport. Great beer, fair prices. You ask for cans, and Lakeport delivers. Lakeport Pilsner, Lakeport Light, and Lakeport Honey Lager, now in cans for the lowest legal price. That's 10 bucks less a 2-4 than regular beer. Lakeport. Lakeport, great beer, fair prices. 
There's always been a natural way to fertilize your lawn and garden, but now there's a way that's a little easier. All natural home gardener Natura Lawn and Garden Care products, safe, organic, and available only at Home Hardware. And for weeding and aerating without bending or stooping, choose the Mark's Choice Speedy Weeder. You're not all alone. This portion of Hockey Night in Canada on CBC is brought to you by Ford, built for life in Canada, and by Subway Restaurants. Subway, eat fresh. We are back for the second period. The Maple Leafs are leading the Canadians by a score of two to one. Radic Bach in the penalty box. He went off at 18-11, so then. He has 11 seconds remaining in his penalty. As play is underway in the second, he gets ready to step back on, and Higgins shoots the puck in for Montreal. And now Bunk is back out of the penalty box or at full strength again. 2-1, Toronto leading Montreal. They get the puck up over the Montreal blue line. Right in front again, Antropov had to back off, circle back neatly, hangs onto it beautifully, and got it to the blue line. Shot in there around the net, and the Leafs start the second period as they did the first. On top of the Canadians, to the line, Poliakovo throws it in there, and Ponikarovsky goes rink wide with that pass. Shot on the net, and Rick, and Huey uh, made that save easily with the stick. Cleared it to the corner himself, and then it swept around the net. Centered again, and Montreal is just barely able to get it to the line and not out. Finally, Markov gets it down the ice, but that's broken up. And the Leafs stay in front of the Canadians. That one intercepted by Poliakovo. One minute into the second. Canadians get the puck up and give it away inside the line. And Denrow got it up there. Stachin on the break. On to the break. Denrow. And in front, Steed scores. Three. The second period for the Maple Leafs. Alex, they lead by two. Alex Steen gets his first goal in 14 games, his 15th of the season. And the Leaf players who are in the 0 for and 1 for club are getting out of it. Steen with a little poke check just poked it over the right pad of Huey. Devereaux starts the play. Staging to Steen to 3-1 Toronto. A 3-1 lead early in the second period in this all-important game. Toronto continue to attack the Montreal Canadiens. Can't seem to figure out how to get going in this hockey game. They're outshot in the first period by a margin of 23 to 9. But now, moving up is Ryder. He scores! Michael Ryder took the shot, and that one was not handled cleanly by Raycroft, and the Habs are back in it. Well, on territorial play or chances or shots, Montreal should be out of it. But the good news for the Canadians is they're in it. And this is a lousy goal on behalf of Raycroft to put Montreal back in the hockey game. Not screened, not deflected, not caught. Just 36 seconds after Steen had given Toronto a two-goal spread. Michael Ryder comes down off his wrong wing, really, and pumped the shot high and got it by Raycroft. 28 to the year for Ryder. He leads the team in goals. The final goal is 28th of the season, scored by number 73, Michael Ryder. Assisted by number So it's a new game again, just about. Not Tom Bresh nearly got inside with that move. Had it poke checked away, and Tucker got a long pass away, and down come the Leafs again. Back in over the line. Tucker made that play, and then Wellwood had to throw it off to the corner. And the Canadians are going to pick it up in the zone and get it ahead and out. Got it down at center ice, and up over the line again. Was LaPierre, but couldn't keep it in. Atan Brest did at the blue line, and then it's hooked out by White. Center ice. Strike for Montreal. Shoots it in. 
point for the Maple Leafs. The pass ahead was a break up there, and Bataglia a bid for his second goal of the game, and that was wide on the short side. Harpal, that's the puck to center ice, and the Leafs pick it up. Got it again. Made a pass this time that was good. Bichan in over the line for the Canadians. Bumped off the puck in there and got on the skates again, and then was bumped a second time, and a referee back there behind the net has called a penalty. To whom? Maybe. Pavel Kavina. Kavina, it looks like, Harry. It's a holding call. And Montreal get a chance to get even in this game on the power play, and their power play is number one in the league. And there's the hold right there. As Kavina's got his hand around the stick of Bejan. Nine for 35 in their last seven games. Montreal on the power play. And first in the NHL this season at 22.5. You gotta watch the big booming shots coming off inside the blue line. Sore had that first one. Markov is the other defenseman. Higgins swings to the right, and here is Sore. Shooting the puck as he crosses center ice, and Higgins is the first one in. The Canadians on the power play get it back. Sore, this shot. That's high, knocked down. Rebound, Higgins! And that's stopped. Hooked on the boards by Hal Gill, stopped by Sure. Another long shot from the blue line. Sundin will clear it this time. And another penalty coming up. An interference call, and I think Hal Gill's going to get it. So they have their two best penalty killing defensemen. Gill will go to the box and join Kavina, and they are monsters on the penalty kill with that long reach. There's the penalty right there as he knocks down Chris Higgins in front of the net. And this is a long five on three. You better believe it. A minute and 23 seconds left on the first penalty. The Canadians getting the first power play moments ago. And now they have a five on three. And the Canadians win the faceoff. It was Ryder who jumped on the puck right away. Banked it on the boards back to the line. Mark Bob is here. And Sore along the blue line was right. He moved it ahead instead. In close, Ryder flipped it up the net. Raycroft made an easy stop, and that'll bring about a face-off in the leave zone. Montreal have 11 goals when they've been up five on three this year, and the Leafs have given up eight under these circumstances. Steen scored at 1-12, made a 3-1 Toronto, then Ryder, and made a 3-2 from Poivu. So Ryder got it back again to Markov, and Sore. Shot. That's blocked. Leafs got it. Now it goes. Didn't waste a second. He just lashed at it and got it in the length of the ice. 3-2, Toronto leading Montreal. Stepping up the Sore. He looks great going in. Ryder got it. Lost it. Sundin shoots it down the ice again. Rue is away out of the net to speed it up. He made a good play to get it up across center ice. And now Poivu. Stick candles in with Markov. To him again. Out in front. The shot. Ryder scores. He gets another one. It's a tie hockey game. Michael Ryder with number 29. And his eight is 617th power play goal. Ryder. And the Montreal power play, which has been devastating this year to opponents, comes through again as Ryder makes no mistake on the rebound. Montreal, who've been badly outplayed, are sitting tied in this hockey game. He had an early chance and was stopped and then got the rebound and look at that. Michael Ryder, Bonavis to Newfoundland. And it's a 3-3 tie. The goal is 29th goal of the season and second of the game. So the Leafs took over in the hockey game. Looks like they're going to keep it going. It did take a two-goal spread early in the second period, but the Canadians get two goals. And they remain on the power play for another five seconds, 45 seconds. At the boards, near the blue line. The halves move around a bit. Now the shot, that stopped. Another chance. That dribbled wide of the net. As Raycroft made one big stop. And Paul trying to knock it out, but McCannis comes in with a pass back. Sorry again. Now he gets set. Too late, can't get a shot, he's covered. So he had to deal it off. On the power play, the Canadians pass it around to Sore. Winding up, shooting, and that was blocked by
by Ponikarovsky again. Another pass around the net. The Canadians are all over the place. Tipped away to the line, and out it comes. Seven seconds left on this power play, which looked pretty sharp for the Canadians. Now Gill is out of the penalty box. The teams are at full strength in a three-free tie in the second. In this all-important hockey game tonight, the Canadians can move to a playoff position. If they can win this game, the Leafs can stay alive. If they win, booyah! That shot blocked. Steen fired back to center. Stajan can't get through the defense pairing. And the Canadians calmly move up the center. Bejan takes it. Well, this is a wicked pace in this game tonight. Here at the ACC in Toronto. Both teams are flying now here in the second period. This time it's Toronto coming up. Play gets to center and it's flipped high into the zone by Denroll. Canadians pick it up. They move it ahead across the line to center ice, but it's whacked back in again. Uwe out to stop it and leave it for his defenseman, Matthew Dandenault. And he'll wait, slowing the pace for just a moment. That won't last long. Don't worry. These two teams are really going hard. And so they should. It's do or die tonight. Here's Wellwood. He stopped at the Montreal blue line. The Leafs had to come back. Higgins nearly stole it and got in. Just lost it going in. Down the ice it goes, and Commissary has to go around the net with Wellwood on his tail. Play goes to the rookie. Kostitsen. He played it ahead, and there goes the captain, Koivu. He's in again, making a great move. Got in. Played it back to the line. Another chance, but it was given up at the blue line, and wrestled to the corner again by Commissary. Out in front. Kostitsen shot is off his stick, and wide. Rebound! Slapped at the goal. The Canadians are on top of the Leafs now. And the Toronto running around in the zone. Pick and center it. Ryder got in, and that was to Ryder again. And he stopped. And rolled the line. It's a goal. Ryder gets number three in the game. And it's 4-3 Montreal. Oh, baby. Well, that goal, right after the Leafs made it 3-1, has motivated this Montreal team. And the Leafs can't handle them. And Ryder gets a hat trick. A natural hat trick. This one wasn't as pretty as his first two, but it counts just as big. As he's going to go pick the puck up behind the net or on the side of the net and jam it in. Not in yet, or is it? Yes, it is. And you can see the Leafs defenseman trying to grab it out with his glove. That is Rob Sheck, the referee there, making the signal that the puck, in fact, is in across the line. That's a goal. Well, they'll probably go upstairs to look at this to confirm it. But he was in great position to make the call, but they're going to make this call in Toronto. The second hat trick of the year for young Mr. Ryder. What a time to get one. What a time to get one. They've been trailing throughout this game. Mind you, we haven't reached the halfway mark of the second period yet. And Ryder has three goals in a row after the Leafs took a 3 1 lead early in the second period. And the goalie has gone. To the lead bench. They made a goaltending change. Ray Croft's out and J.S. Oban is in. So Paul Maurice has made the switch before the midway mark of the second period. It's 4 3. Montreal has taken the lead against Toronto. Long pass to the Taglia and he chops at it. It gets in deep. Leafs pouring after it. And it all. Quick skating defenseman got back there too from Montreal in the halves. Head cleared out. White shot is stopped by Uwe. And he hangs on. Ryder's 30th was assisted by Higgins and Koibu at 7.37. Three goals by Ryder, three assists by the captain. Ode to the fresh toasted Italian BMT, piled oh so high with ham, salami, pepperoni, a tastacular trifecta of massive meatness. Tuck them into a loaf of freshly baked bread with melted processed cheese and an avalanche of crisp veggies, and you got a sandwich that has even the burliest burger questioning its manhood. Give your appetite a little TLC with a big old Italian BMT. 
Subway. Eat fresh. Shop today and save with your $300 Mad Money bonus check until Sunday only during a legendary Midnight Madness sale at the Brick. There's sale prices throughout the store. Plus, you don't pay for 15 months. Shop the online flyer at thebrick.com. We've completely redesigned the all-new Sierra from the inside out. Introducing the more comfortable, more powerful, and the most fuel-efficient all-new 2007 GMC Sierra. We examined everything and overlooked nothing. That's professional grade. Get the sleep you need. See the sleep experts at The Brick. New for 2007, the Serta Backlogic Gold in Firm or Plush. Serta uses science to help you sleep better. Right now, with your Serta purchase, get these three bonus gifts at The Brick. At Boston, Ottawa, trying to nail down home ice advantage for their series with Pittsburgh. Here's Danny Heatley's 50th goal of the year, and it's vintage Heatley. A bullet as he wires that one. Mazeros and Spezza with, or Alfredson with the helpers, and then Spezza gets his 34th of the year. Christoph Schubert with that bullet that caroms off Jason, and it's 4-2 Ottawa in the second there. There's Michael Ryder, who has scored three times in a row here in the second period to give the Canadians the lead. 13th multiple point game for Mr. Ryder. That last goal coming at 7:37. The second at 4:32. Ryder got the Canadians close with his first from Koivu, who assisted also on the other two. That line really clicked in a hurry. Kovalev moves up over the line for Montreal. Matandres couldn't quite handle the pass. Getting ready to take the shot, and the Leafs bring it out. Brought in over the line by Demerol. Got in and made a handy move in the corner, and then took a hit back there. The Canadians get the puck from him. We all skate away. Sure, up there to left on the rest of center. He's knocked down at the blue line. And the Leafs will turn it back quickly. Long pass was taken away at the Montreal blue line. Ripped off the glass. Again, Antropov kept it in. There's pass in front. Anikorovsky again with Sundin. Round the net, Sundin coming out. The shot stopped. Antropov is in front of the net, too, and the penalty is going to be called against Montreal. It's a slashing call as Antropov's stick is the DNA evidence on the slash. Ryder getting his three goals. That was one. There's the second. And a bit of work to do on the third goal. Again, at the line. It took a while, but the referee saw it and called it. That's seven goals for Ryder in the last eight games. Montreal's got a penalty coming here. And uh, whoever has the penalty doesn't know it, and they're hunting for him now. Or it could be <laughs> against the netminder. We'll wait and see. It's Let's a slashing a call, so it could very well be, well, watch Bejan there. It might be Bejan. See the goalie got caught slashing somebody. Might be, yes. No, it's Bejan. Well, that's a funny penalty, I'll tell you that, because I don't think it was slash. I think the referee saw the broken stick and thought it was a slash. Nevertheless, Bajan's in there for two minutes or less. That's right. Whatever, he's in the penalty box, and it's called slashing at 9.23. Toronto 0 for 2 in the power play. Montreal they had nine shots they poured on Cristobal Louis. Well, it's 4-3 Montreal as we approach the halfway mark of the second period. And up steps the Toronto Maple Leafs. Quintet on this power play. They couldn't do much with that. It shut down the ice by the Canadians. So back again is Carberlay with Wellwood, Tucker, and McCabe and Sunday. In over line to come, Wellwood on the boards, lost it. Commissaric, chance to clear. Sundin stopped him. Fired in deep again. Markov now grabs it. He goes to the corner with it. Will that get out? Yes, it will. And down the ice by McCabe. Carberlay back. Canadians penalty killers changing up. Through the middle. Koivu is on the ice now, and he can't see that pass. Dumped in, and Sori has it. He'll whack it hard off the boards behind his netminder. Clear to the corner. Leafs on it. Well, with the other way to Sundin. 
back to the blue line. McCabe waits, and it's intercepted. The pass to Koivu. Ryder is catching up. Koivu going in. The backhander. Stopped by McCabe in front of the net. Two on one. Nearly click for the Canadians. That would have been dynamite for the Leafs. The Leafs are behind by a goal on the power play, and here's a chance to set it up. Coverley! Rebound! And it doesn't get to Tucker in time. He got it back to the line of McCabe. Coverley! Tucker! McCabe! Tucker! Moving up! Shot! That's stuck. Anikarowski grabbed it behind the goal off the boards. It gets by everybody and out and down the ice. 18 seconds left in the Bijan penalty. Canadians doing a good job killing this one off. Johnson stalled him that time. Now Bach is up there and he heads to the bench and get a change. The Leafs move back through center ice with three seconds left on the power play. Now it's done as the puck is in deep. And that'll be called back. 8.35 remaining in the second. Ryder with three goals. And Koivu with three assists. Another fresh moment from Subway Restaurants. There's nothing like a BMT sandwich from Subway Restaurants. Genoa salami, pepperoni and ham with your choice of fresh vegetables. Served on freshly baked bread. It's the fresh taste you've been looking for. Subway, eat fresh. Another fresh moment from Subway Restaurants. There's nothing like a BMT sandwich from Subway Restaurants. Genoa salami, pepperoni and ham with your choice of fresh vegetables. Served on freshly baked bread. It's the fresh taste you've been looking for. Subway, eat fresh. Thanks, Ontario, for switching to Lakeport Pilsner, for making Lakeport Light the fastest growing light beer, and for making Lakeport Honey Lager the number one honey beer. We're still 2-4 two for 2-4. Four two four. Lakeport. Lakeport, great beer, fair prices. You ask for cans, and Lakeport delivers. Lakeport Pilsner, Lakeport Light, and Lakeport Honey Lager, now in cans for the lowest legal price. That's 10 bucks less a 2-4 than regular beer. Lakeport. Lakeport, great beer, fair prices. Michael Ryder with three goals in the second period, electrifying the Canadian fans, and there are plenty of them here to five, watch this game. It only took them five minutes and 49 seconds to get it. And in the previous seven games against the Leafs this year, he only had one. And he's got three tonight. And this is a game in which the Canadians can move on to eighth place in the Eastern Conference and face Buffalo in the first round. Unless the Leafs can do something about it now. Only down a goal. It's a close game. The Leafs took over early. Canadians showing signs now of taking over the second half. We have 8.20 left to play in the second period. And it's 4-3, Montreal. Shots. 27-20. Canadians have picked it up. Anderson ahead in that department. Higgins is up. Higgins tried the sharp angle shot. It was deflected by Gill over the glass. Tomorrow on CBC, the world's top curlers go head-to-head -head live from Edmonton. CBC Sports as the final of the Ford World Men's Curling Championship tomorrow starting at 1.30 p.m. Eastern Time on CBC TV. Seven fifty-five left to play in the second period. 4-3 Montreal. Here's Ryder again. Boy, has he got a hot hand. He's in around the net. Ryder has the puck. He finally lost it to McCabe and got it back again. He's coming out front. Ryder with the wraparound. Didn't work. But the Canadians are all around that Maple Leaf goal again. Leading by a goal, looking for more damage. Into the corner it goes and brought back out by Koivu. Slapped it ahead. Ryder heads for the net. Got in front and puck went by him. And out this near side. Now behind the goal again. Montreal all over. The Leafs. Jogan centered it. Ryder has it. Tied up. Leafs hang on and finally get control of it in the zone and get it out. 
Down they go, led by Koliakovo, coming in with John Cole. That is knocked down. And the Canadians turn it back up ice. Erzogen flipped it ahead. Kovalev can't find it. And it'll be Kavarle who sees his man open and Sunday fell. Trying to poke it in over the line. Nothing seems to go right at times for one team and then the other. This time it's the Canadians getting a break or two. Sundin tripped up on that one. Now he lost that one. And it's flipped back out across the blue line to center. Canadians batted high. That'll be a high stick if they play it. They don't. The Leafs do so the play is allowed to continue. And it's brought back in by Antropov on with the breaks. And it goes to Podokorovsky. There's Sundin after it. Sundin to the corner, looking around. Played it back to the goal again. And Antropov didn't get the pass. Johnson for the Canadians. He's on it. Can't move it too far. And the Leafs come alive again and force the play. Finally, it's knocked down at the blue line and cleared out by Redick Bonk. I will dump back in with 6.05 left to play in the second. 4-3 Montreal. Tipped down the ice. Lightly an icing call. It will be icing. Hell Gill back to touch it up. The Canadians have stormed back and have taken a 4-3 lead on the Maple Leafs. How do these rotors work again? Regular grab like, like this. But the superior ones grab like this. Mm. Honey, I just... Introducing Ate Premium One Rotors. Their elliptical grooves channel away heat, dirt, and water for better performance. Plus, they increase brake pad life and act as a wear indicator, so you know when to replace them. Automotive safety starts at Canadian Tire. Mm -hmm. Looking for the right mortgage? Come to TD Canada Trust, where we'll help you find a mortgage that has everything you're looking for which could make all the difference. I'm so excited, and I just can't hide it. Get the mortgage that's right for you. TD Canada Trust. Banking can be this comfortable. Expedia.ca presents Lesson 1, Conversing in Italy. Ciao! Perché sei così bella? Cosa ti ha portato a Roma? Il vento? Le stelle? The stars? No. The Great European Vacation Sale? Yeah. Right now, your perfect European vacation is on sale. Just choose your flight and the hotel of your dreams, and presto, we'll get you there. Aspetta! Vengo con te! Expedia.ca. Your trip, your way. Michael Ryder with 25 or more goals in his first three years in the Big Tent. And he has had a marvelous second period here. And here's a sample of a play that he didn't score on, but could have. I've seen this guy play a few games, but I'm not sure I've seen him play any better than this. Well, five minutes and 49 seconds he had with those scoring plays. Bull assisting on the three goals, and here comes a penalty. Coming to Kilger, who by accident tripped the Montreal player when the puck bounced by the left defenseman White. They were getting a break coming out of the zone. Kilger got the stick down. He dropped the stick so he wouldn't get the penalty, but here it is right here. That's Kovalev. But it's too late. Kilger tripping 14-11, Montreal one for two in the power play. Two minutes for tripping. So the Canadians can really get a grasp on the hockey game. The Leafs did have a two-goal lead. Didn't last for long. Now the Habs have their chance. Soray's shot. Tipped in front. Score! Higgins gets number two, and Ryder was right there with him. A power play goal very quickly. And it's a 5-3 a Montreal lead. Well, anybody who looked at the Montreal statistics knew that the Leafs had to stay out of the penalty box. And they haven't, and it's cost them two power play goals. And this one is shoveled in on the rebound by Higgins for his second of the night. 20 seconds into the power play, this goal coming by Montreal. George Gillette, the owner of the Montreal Canadiens, and a real fine fellow, is here watching. He's part owner of the Liverpool FC. 
FC soccer team with Mr. Hicks and Mr. Cronky, two owners from Dallas and Colorado. Montreal now have taken a 5-3 lead in this important game tonight here at the Air Canada Centre in Toronto. With 5-10 left to play in the second period. The Leafs came out such fine style in the first 20 minutes. The Chilt signs are really taking over the hockey game on this particular evening. Right now, Canadians have come back in the second period and have almost duplicated what the Leafs did in the first. Four and they straight have goals. rewarded for that with a 5-3 lead. Four straight goals. I don't think I've seen a game this year where one team dominated for as long as the Leafs did and how Montreal has done the same thing to the Leafs in this period. And Aubin has to make a nice save to keep it at 5-3. Puck in deep and Steen grabs it. And Indians keep it in, they keep coming. That is Higgins again, flipping a high one in. Knocked down, the shot is ripped wide of the net. Higgins went after the rebound and couldn't get it. Now he has it, centered it, it gets to Markov. On the other side, Montreal taking over again and moving it in deep. Behind the net, looking out front, the pass, get right by everybody in front of the goal and cleared by Devereaux. Down he comes for the Maple Leafs. The Leafs need one here now with 425 left in the period. Devereaux all over them and got it in deep again and changing one after, but Markov stepped in front of him. However, Kovina came up and dropped it back. Devereaux shot. It's tipped in front of the net. It was weak anyway, and it got wide of the goal. Higgins grabs it and comes out. Left it at center ice and playing it back in. Kostitsen made a good move. This young rookie looking sharp coming around the net. He slammed on the boards, but back in after the puck again is Higgins. Higgins to the corner. Hangs on to it. Backed it up to Koivu. He stopped by Steen. Got loose again. Koivu playing a great second period for the Canadians. Got it in deep. Koivu stays open, but the puck doesn't get to him. It flipped in from the blue line by Bouillard, around the net. Canadians trying to center it again. Herjogan made a chance. Now it's Kostitsen again. Hangs on, shoots it in. Canadians all over the Leafs here. Another long shot blocked by Oban. And he hangs on to it. 3.25 left in the second. Closed captioning of this program is brought to you in part by Chevrolet. Let's go Chevrolet.ca. There's nothing as helpless as the coach of a team that's given up four straight goals in a game that you have to win to make the playoffs. A tough pill to swallow for the coach. Ryder with three goals. And, and now assist. adding an assist on the goal by Higgins. He and Sore in on that one at 14.31. 25 left. In the second period, Leafs get the puck out. Cole got it up. He's alone on this play and shot it in. Uwe shot it off the boards behind the net. Leafs keep it in. Arrow stolen. Circle, got it back. Long shot by White. That's deflected away from the net to the far side and jumped pull on it again, but now lost it. And Johnson of the Canadians can't get the puck out. Shot in deep, cleared out to center. Bijan, the pass got into Johnson. He'll have to turn back, bumped off the puck, shot it in deep, and takes off to the bench as they change. Under three minutes left to play in the second period. In this last game of the regular season for the Leafs and the half. Canadians can make the playoffs and eliminate Toronto with a win here tonight. They're ahead five to three at this moment. Kovalev can't get the puck out. Long shot tipped in wide of the net. And the Leafs keep after it. Tucker bumped off the puck, got it back. To the line as Kodiakovo tried the screen shot. Score! You shoot it out the net, you never know. people on the way in. It was a wrist shot by Koliakovo. I don't know that it went off a Montreal player or did it go off the Leaf player, Kilger, in front of the net. Here it comes. It looked like it might have hit Kilger in the shoulder.
and that's what Huey is complaining about. Is it a high stick or a high shoulder? Well, it didn't hit the stick, so that's going to count. I think it might have even gone off the helmet of Kilgore. They're going to get him in the Koliakabo for now, but they may change that one. Whatever, it's 5-4, a one-goal game again. This is a beauty tonight. Higgins is offside. Well, let's have another look and see if we can find out before the official score does who actually got the goal. And off the Montreal forward stick, Latron Dress just inside the blue line, and I don't know what it hit after that. Forty-six, the time of that even strength goal by Koliakovo from Wellwood and Tucker. His eighth of the season. Relief defenseman Koliakovo. And what a goal that is with the Canadians swarming all over Toronto on the shift before this one. And Koliakovo scored. Toronto go down the ice and make it close again. Toronto outshot Montreal 23-9 in the first period and have been outshot 14-6. And here's another look at the Koliakovo goal. It's going to hit Latron Dessa's stick there. And I don't guess it didn't hit anybody else on the way in. Uwe had no chance as there was three people in front of him and it was kind of a lob shot. It came from Koliakabo, his eight from Wellwood and Tucker, 1746. Sundin now at center ice, banked it on the boards, got it again and shot it deep. 135 in the period. Uwe played it off a little bit. Knocked down by Koliakovo again. He might do the same thing. The shot was not down in front of the net that time. And Johnson played it ahead. Bejan missed it. Johnson was nailed by Antropov when he delivered that pass. The Leafs come back in. 115 remaining in the period. Here's a penalty to the Canadians on that trip. As the Leafs were on the move. And there's going to be a penalty to the Canadian player, Johnson. That might have been an accidental trip too, but there was no doubt about the fact that it was a trip. And the Leafs have a chance to tie the hockey game on the power play, and here comes the trip right there. I'll tell you one thing, Bob, if both these teams play this way, or either one of these teams play this way in the playoffs, they won't last three games. <laughs> Toronto for three. Needing one badly now to have a third period like you wouldn't believe. What a <laughs> setup this is. Montreal has scored 17 shorthanded goals to tie Ottawa for the lead in that department. We were talking last week, or maybe three weeks ago, that maybe this last game of the season might be one of the big ones. <laughs> now we're talking about the last period of the last game. It's 5-4 at the moment. The Leafs send the power play trying to tie it and get in position by passing it around. There's John Paul with the puck. Back to the line. Back to Paul from Carole. Again, Paul shot. Love by Uwe, and he hangs onto it. The Leafs need somebody in front of the net to at least take the concentration away from the goalie and or make a defenseman take you. Wellwood's trying to stand there, but when the shot comes, he backs away. The rest of this period, the power play, unless something else happens. With only 52 seconds left in the period. The Leafs pass it around and set it up again, McCabe. Tucker, he'll try to set up McCabe. Goes past him with a shot. Haberlay didn't shoot it. The Leafs get ready now. Wellwood hands it off. Here's Haberlay back to McCabe and his shot. That was blocked. McCabe was set up perfectly that time and put it right on the net. He's open again. Wellwood sees him out there, and he goes the other way to Coverley. And now McCabe moves up. Coverley's shot is blocked. McCabe grabs it, feeds it ahead. 18 seconds left in the period. Leafs trying to tie it up to set up a third period. It's Tucker coming in. The pass. No shot. Dumped away from the net. Cleared by Bisham, but not out. Five seconds. Can they get another shot? Sunday maybe. 
it goes around the net. And the horn goes inland the second period. And the Canadians hang on to a one goal lead. Three goals by Ryder and one by Higgins. Koliakovo scoring for the Maple Leafs. The shots were 14 8 Montreal. 31 23 Toronto over the two periods. There is a high stick at the end of the period. Now the period will end. And you can see that uh, the high stick went to Wellwood. I don't know that there was a penalty on it. It doesn't look like there was. What a game tonight. And guess what? There's more. Montreal 5, Toronto 4. This portion of Hockey Night in Canada on CBC is brought to you by Subway Restaurants. Subway, eat fresh. Ode to the fresh toasted Italian BMT, piled oh so high with ham, salami, pepperoni, a tastacular trifecta of massive meatness. Tuck them into a loaf of freshly baked bread with melted processed cheese and an avalanche of crisp veggies, and you got a sandwich that has even the burliest burger questioning its manhood. Give your appetite a little TLC with a big old Italian BMT. Subway, eat fresh. 5-4 Montreal through two here at ACC, cheering collectively in both Montreal and Bonavista tonight. Three goals in a span of 549. Have you ever done that before in any level of hockey? <laughs> I don't know. It uh, happened pretty quick, uh, but uh, the bounces were there, I guess. But we knew uh, that, th that period we had to come out hard, and uh, we knew they weren't going to back off, and we just uh, started coming coming at them, throwing puck at the net, and uh, we uh, managed to get Ray Croft out of the game, and now uh, I think we're down by two. And we got uh, two men short now going into third, and it's a big kill for us. Let's talk about that for a second because they all played and outshot you badly in the first. You did the same to them in the second. What did you say in the first intermission to turn it around? Uh, well, we knew it wasn't the start we needed, but we were still in the game, and uh, we just uh, wanted to come out hard in the second and uh, set the tone, and we did, and uh, we managed to come up with the lead. Uh, above everything else, what does this come down to now in period three? Uh, 20 minutes, I guess. <laughs> it's a 20-minute game, and uh, we got to, I guess, work hard for 20 and uh, try and make sure we uh, come up with the win to <laughs> get to the playoffs. Michael, four points in the second. Congratulations. Have a good third. Thank you very much. Ron and Don, there's Michael Ryder here in Toronto. Bruce, Tom Cocker, and Red Ryder. I yeah. think that was a little Mitch moment Ryder for... Mitch and the Ryders of that. All right. Look, full marks for sure for the Canadians and Higgins are doing a great job and everything, but uh, the shots were 24-9 to nine in the first period, and they were, at least were smoking. I'm going to show you the killer goal, that, that second goal. Watch this now. He didn't have a chance. Raycroft did not have a chance on this one at all. He did not see it, and it went in. Are we going to see it again to show it, or are we going to? Now, if you could show it again, now watch. He doesn't have a chance. You cannot stop which you cannot see. You either make a move to stop it or get out of the way. Should he have been out further? Should have been out. Well, no, he doesn't. He can't see, doesn't know what he doesn't know where they're going. Now watch against uh, the Islanders. Watch this here. Same goal, same goal. And the guy cannot do, you cannot watch this one. Can't see it. You can't see it. I'm not saying it was a mistake to pull him, but the, I feel sorry for the guy. He's the guy. Would pulled. you put him back in now? One no, goal you can't game? put him back. You can't put him back in now. Why not? But I'll tell you one thing. Uh, I feel sorry for him. And uh, I guess uh, Carbonell made the right move in UA. He looks like a million bucks. 24 to 9. That was the shots when that second goal went in. Good stuff. Big five on three coming up. Uh, satellite hot stove on the other side of the break. Murray Wilson's doing the uh, Montreal broadcast. He'll join Pierre Lebrun. Scott Morrison, when we come back to uh, analyze this game and stories around the loop tonight. Four series are set. That and much more on Hockey Night in Canada next. There are places where your best friend isn't a dog. It's a Toyota truck. Everything we've learned out there has gone in here. Introducing the 2007 Tacoma. Big, tough, and with a V6 that makes some V8s nervous. It's very powerful. We really 
just want to make sure he can pick any university he wants. Okay. Let's have a look. What do you see in the future? A financial security advisor from Freedom 55 Financial can help you get there. Because financial planning is about more than just retirement. It's about making things happen in every stage of your life. So keep dreaming, but start planning. So you know what? Here's how we can help make this work. Freedom 55 Financial. The freedom to choose, the power to get there. Now that's exciting. But what would life be like if Casino Rama hadn't taught them how to get excited? Congratulations, caller. You've just won a trip for four to the Caribbean. We won. Party time? Thank you, Casino Rama, for teaching us how to get excited. Ever since we took Dave into Wireless Wave, he's adjusting really well. He definitely feels at home. He really enjoys being part of Wireless Wave. I really enjoy being a part of Wireless Wave. He's experiencing choice for the first time in his life. Choice of networks? Choice of networks. Any phone? Any phone. Wow. Like the sleek Motorola Razor available at a mall near you from your Rogers experts at Wireless Wave. There's a little less room since Dave moved in, but uh, that's OK. Good night, Dave. Good night, buddy. Wireless Wave. Cellular. Made simple. Satellite Hot Stove, brought to you by Ford, built for life in Canada. Back at Studio 42, Scott, here's hoping you can hear Pierre and Murray on this uh, telex that you're wearing. You just plugged it in. Uh, Murray, why don't we start with you, your thoughts on the game here. <laughs> what a hockey game this one is. Reminds me of 73. Montreal fans play the Chicago Blackhawks in game five. It ended up 8-7. You had Esposito and Dryden and two goaltenders. And it was a night just get the puck to the net. You never know what was going to happen. Look at that deflection. Latton dressed the last goal to get the Leafs back into it. And that gave them new energy. They were much better in the last three, four minutes than they were in the previous ten. Pierre? Well, I don't think the Buffalo Sabres right now are shaking in their boots watching <laughs> this game because these two teams cannot play defense. Uh, entertaining game, but uh, unbelievably uh, disorganized. You know, Cristobal UA, by the way, his first start since February 14th, but he hasn't won a game since January 20th. So for him, this is a pretty big night uh, to win his first game in three months heading into the playoffs if the Canadians hold on. Well, so many shots in the first period. Uh, it was almost like playing a regular game, but I thought Cristobal, he, he so far is a star for the Canadians along with Michael Ryder. Well, I think it's a suspenseful game, and uh, that may be the best thing you can say for it because it hasn't been played very well at either end. The defensive zone coverage has been brutal. Toronto had a chance, and you would have thought that they'd put them out of their misery by going up 3-1, to one, but the bugaboo for this team continues to be its inability to protect leads, whether they're screenshots, they're not getting the key save at the key time. Oh, they have squandered some huge leads. There's no doubt about that. Uh, what about the 5-3 uh, coming up here, Murray? Uh, Montreal's special teams have been uh, just gigantic, but uh, your thoughts on the, the Bayjan penalty at the end, the discipline factor? Well, I, I wasn't sure they were going to call that or not. I was after mm. the whistle, but they did make the call. And, you know, the Canadians had a five on three or they scored on. So at least obviously have that opportunity. And, you know, Steve Bezier, you have to keep your stick down. Unfortunately, in this game, they call everything now. I thought early in the game, some of the penalties they called, you probably won't see called in the playoffs. The marginal may be at best, but, you no, know, that one certainly deserved. And, and then don't forget, this is almost like a two-goal lead for Montreal in a way because the Leafs cannot go to overtime. So they're going into the third, up by one, and really, uh, you know, a tie game is perfect for them. So a lot of pressure on Toronto, I think, to score not five on three. Yeah, I was going to say, it is a two-goal difference because of the, the non-tie factor. But this will be the second five on three for the Leafs. And when you look at those moments, those regrets they'll have throughout this season as they analyze it, it's because the power play has been another element of their game that's let them down when they needed it most. Well, this gives Sundin the perfect opportunity to tie Daryl Settler. no doubt about it. Grapes drew attention to the fact that he's standing so far back waiting for trying to get himself some room so he gets the puck but maybe not uh, in close enough to be a threat what would you see uh, the Leafs doing here on the power play Marie if you were in Toronto well the difference I see from uh, the start of the season is that Wellwood down low on the right side they had that cross ice pass to Tucker on the back side because he's a left hand shot and hides behind the net and leaves a stick there and Wellwood doesn't seem to want to make that play he doesn't want to want to shoot the puck either he's been given it a couple of times by Sundin down low being a right shot he has great angle to the net but he is unwilling to shoot the puck and as we saw on the Kuliakov goal, they have to get traffic in front, and traffic that stays in front of the goal during that power play, they're surrounding it on the perimeter, but that's not doing any damage in front as far as the goaltender is concerned. All right, we're going to take a short break. Broach the subject of Matt Sundin's future. Also, what will New Jersey do with their goaltending if somehow Toronto rallies? That's on the other side of this. So easy to 
sing a song about you. Shortcuts are so overrated. It would be so Edge, easy. Edge, the new crossover from Ford. Sundin's future, Scott. Well, a decision has to be made as to whether or not they pick up the option or do they try and get a new deal done. They've been looking to do a two-year deal, I think, if they uh, come to an agreement in that regard. But just the way the season's ending with one goal in now 20 games, there'll be a lot of people wondering whether he is the guy to lead the Leafs for a couple more years. What would you do? Murray. Well, he, he's 36 years old. He's been here a long, long time. Uh, I think the question is, what can you get for him? Uh, you're in no big rush to do something. If you can get a deal done with him, uh, you know, maybe uh, you don't give him a no-trade contract uh, or put some teams in there like they did to Samsonoff when the Canadians picked him up. There were 10 teams that uh, they are allowed to make a deal with if somebody wanted him, but obviously they didn't. So uh, Matt Sundin, I think, still has some good years in him. Maybe it's not here in Toronto. He's been here a long time. Well, I can guarantee you, I know there are people out there that think maybe the Leafs should move on, but that is not the plan right now for John Ferguson. He does want to get him done to a two-year deal. He will not walk away from this guy. Uh, when you look at the free agent market, now that Datsuk is off, Briere and Gomez are basically your two other options, but there's 20 other teams that are going to be chasing those guys, and that's if Gomez doesn't resign in New Jersey. So Sundin is the option right now for the Leafs, and he will stay here. And keep in mind, the Leafs don't have that advantage they've had over the years, that huge pocketbook either. Well, the one thing they have to do, the way they did when they brought Sundin in to take over eventually from Gilmore, they better find the guy who's going to take over from him, especially if this is the sign of a decline. Well, look at Washington. They went in the tank without Yager, Boston without Thornton. I know he's 36 but still to lose that star. The Datsu contract you say is interesting? Well, it's interesting that it's seven years. It's the longest extension that they've ever given a player in Detroit, and it seems to be the sense around the league that we may see more of this because of unrestricted free agency, the age coming down, that if you have a good young player you like, you will try to lock him up much longer. And the move may be made by Detroit because they're having some serious ticket uh, problems, and 2,500 people there, season ticket holders, didn't pick up their playoff tickets. Murray, we're so tight for time. Sorry, let's put up the board of the matchups that are set, just as we're trying to cover a few bases here. Uh, we do know that Vancouver's Kevin Bieksa left the game today with a, a cast on his leg, a, a walking cast, so we'll try to get you more on BX as we go through the night tonight. Ottawa has a 4-2 lead. Pittsburgh on a Gary Roberts goal, 1-0. There are the other matchups that are set. Uh, Murray, Sheldon Surrey, quick comment on him. Well, or here. Well, Sheldon Surrey, uh, I don't know if he'll be back in Montreal. He's going to get a huge ticket from somebody. Can Canadians match? Canadians right now, they need to get Andre Markov signed. That'll be the one. All right. Wish we had more time, uh, perhaps, between games. Thanks to Pierre Lebrun, to Murray Wilson, and to Scott Morrison. 5-4 Montreal. The Leafs with a big 5-3 on en route. Brought to you by Ford. Built for life in Canada. Hey, how you doing? Good. Can I get a steel back in a steel tub, please? Absolutely. Wow, that's really big. Thank you. Introducing the steel back steel tubs. Size does matter. Introducing Tiverton Bear Honey Brown. Premium, all natural, refreshingly smooth, full body beer with a touch of pure honey. Tiverton Bear Honey Brown, the mark of a truly great beer. <laughs> Now that's exciting. But what would life be like if Casino Rama hadn't taught them how to get excited? Congratulations, caller. You've just won a trip for four to the Caribbean. We won. Party time? Thank you, Casino Rama, for teaching us how to get excited. Harvey's introduces the return of the Angus Burger. One big, juicy Angus beef patty covered in real Canadian cheddar. Crisp lettuce, juicy pickles, and fresh-cut tomatoes are on some other guy's uh, <coughs> burger. Just ketchup and mustard. <laughs> that a boy, Gordo. Top just the way you like it. It's one of Canada's best-tasting burgers. Harvey's Angus Burger is back. Harvey's makes your hamburger a beautiful thing. Who will earn the right to be called champion? All right, now watch this, folks. Don't miss the 2007 Stanley Cup playoffs on CBC's Hockey Night in Canada. Round one begins Wednesday on CBC. It's true. It's true. It's true. Hello, it's true. 
It's true. It's true. Feels as though the playoffs have begun this evening, but the Stanley Cup kicks off Wednesday night. We'll have a doubleheader for you, starting with Ottawa, Pittsburgh, and following that with Vancouver and Dallas. Likely 7 and 10. That'll be confirmed, but you can almost take that to the bank. Rhett Warner and the Calgary Flames trying to salt away the final playoff spot in the Western Conference. They host the Edmonton Oilers by four Montreal. Third period at ACC is next. You're watching CBC Television. Canada's Olympic Network. Enterprise Rent-A-Car for my trip? It's expensive. It's not expensive, Ma. They pick us up. Sounds expensive. Pickup's free, Ma. Well, if it's not expensive, why didn't you rent me a bigger car? Pick Enterprise. We'll pick you up. Uh, sure. Now, buddy. Oh, Ma. Damn it. Manage. I'm going to see you. Learn for free at the world's largest poker school, PartyPoker.net. Everyone's playing. Enterprise rent a car for my trip. It's expensive. It's not expensive, Ma. They pick us up. Sounds expensive. Pickup's free, Ma. Well, if it's not expensive, why didn't you rent me a bigger car? Pick Enterprise. We'll pick you up. It is our most valuable possession. We protect it. Nurture it. Defy it. Sometimes it has the upper hand. Other times, we do. Our health. Without it, we have nothing. With it, everything's possible. That's why we've added more services to Health Watch to help you manage your health in a new way. Only at Shoppers Drug Mart. This portion of Hockey Night in Canada on CBC is brought to you by The Home Depot. You can do it, we can help. Welcome back, everybody, for the third period of this important hockey game here at the Air Canada Centre in Toronto. The Canadians are leading the Maple Leafs by a score of 5-4, and look at this. Two Canadians are in the box. Johnson has 48 seconds remaining in his penalty, and at the 20-minute mark of the second period, Beijing received double minors for high sticking. So here we are, underway. In the third, the Leafs with a five on three to start. A big, big penalty kill for the Canadians if they hope to make the playoff big tonight and get into that eighth playoff spot in the Eastern Conference. The Leafs have to win. They have a hope to get in and then watch the Islanders go to work tomorrow in New Jersey and hope they lose. Well, it's slashed up the boards and not out. Again, Bunt takes over in his own zone, got it around the net for Thomas Eric. Stopped by Coverley at the blue line and kept on side. The Leafs are setting up on this five on three, trying to tie the game here. Sundin's pass was a hot pass to handle, and it whizzed by Tucker. Here's Coverley and the pass. Coverley, Sundin, Coverley, McCabe ready. No, he's covered now. Coverley, the crowd roaring for a shot. One penalty has done that of Johnson. Coverley won't shoot it. McCabe can't shoot it. Does scores. McCabe scores. so much at stake and still Beijing is in the box for another two minutes or less. I think McCabe and Coverley set a record of passes back and forth. They must have done it five to six times before finally McCabe decided to shoot it. There's one, two, three, four, five, and a shot. Coverley got five assists on the play. He was covered, but he said to heck with it. We've been passing too much. I've got to shoot it. And it paid off. 
Get it by the penalty killer and hope for the best. 5-5, five, five. would you believe? Third period, Leafs and Canadians. And here come the Leafs again, Cody Akabal. Fed the puck ahead. Power play, Toronto still underway. Beijing in the box, and Cody Akabo had to hang it on the boards and get it back out and hold it again. He couldn't keep it in. Now they play it up the center. Brought in over the line again by Wellwood. He likes to pass it around and does to Cody Akabo, who lost it. Here to set up a break to Higgins. Higgins takes it and ripped it on the boards and got it out and down the ice. 112 left in that penalty of Beijing. Cody Akabo circling. The Leafs are changing, so are the Canadian penalty killers. But it's Sundin of the Maple Leafs coming in. He's upended. The puck inside the line. And another penalty coming to Montreal. Hoyville this time is going to be called, and the penalties are pouring on to the Montreal Canadiens. Well, that was an accidental trip, but unfortunately for Koivu and Montreal, you can see the stick right between the legs of Wellwood, and Koivu gives it a little twist, and down Wellwood goes. So for 57 seconds, five on three. It looks like something that's written in the cards. Koivu goes now, just as Bejan's penalty is down to 57 seconds. He had a double minor, remember, at the end of the second period. And now Koibos in. Here's another five on three. The Leafs get ready to take the lead in the hockey game again. Carberlay and McKay back and forth. Don't tell me they'll keep doing this. Carberlay, Sundin, and back up to Carberlay, I'll bet you. There. And back to Sundin. There. Shot off the outside of the goalpost. Carberlay, one of the few times he took the shot and nearly put it in. Sundin ready to Carberlay, or rather to McKay, but he missed on that weak shot. Again, Commissary. Loose puck, McCabe stops it again. Wide open, shoots! Drilled it wider than that. And Carberlay missed it. 18 seconds from now, Bejan will be on. This is Carberlay again. Leeds trying to take the lead again. Carberlay waiting. Carberlay waiting. That was nearly intercepted. Carberlay once more, McCabe open to his right. McCabe, no shot. In front, shot! Sandin! Hit by it. It's knocked down and hangs on again for another face-off to the Canadians. And Uwe had to make a big stop on that Sunday. I think if Copperley and McCabe, if one defenseman got right in the middle of the rink, so you'd have two people to pass it to if you're that guy, you'd end up with some chances. Sunday can't get it by Uwe. He's off to the side of the net. He doesn't get all of the puck. And Uwe comes across quickly to make the save. Carberlay and Sundin, by the way, assisted on the McCabe goal that tied it. At 58 seconds. Leafs win the draw. Another shot. Missed the net. Lue is out of it and nearly hit him. Might have gone in, had to hit him on the skate or the leg, but he was way out. The puck hit him and drifted wide of the net. Well, the puck came off the end of the rink. And, uh, the best face-off man in the league wins it, and here comes a shot off the end of the rink. Yannick Moreau nearly got to it first. Koivu's penalty has 55 seconds remaining. 5-5, five, five, third period. Sudden death already. What are you talking about? Shot out and down the ice. Leafs come back to pick it up. On the power play, Cabernet turns. Tucker to his right, through the middle, Wellwood. In over the line, dropping it back. Little backhand pass went by Tucker from Sundin to the line to McCabe, to Cabernet. Again, Sundin is in on the play to Sundin, the shot. And that's a way wide. Kept in by McCabe, Sundin again. And now Cabernet, Sundin stays open. And the long shot are ahead again. Oh, my goodness. Cabernet makes a great play. He doesn't shoot it right away. He's in the middle of the rink on the blue line. He waits till two Leaf players, Wellwood and Tucker, go to the front of the net. And that is why I think Hue never did see this shot. Nobody there now. So Cabernet waits and waits until he gets two teammates in front and Tucker may well have 
Egyptian. And Huey had no chance on it. Three forty three. Time of that go ahead goal. Canadians back up with that shot that's wide of the net from Parashogan. Parashogan again in front of the net is Ryder. And Oban has to hang on. The team that gets the next touchdown is going to win this game. Let's have another look at this goal. I don't know who they've given it to yet for sure. We know Coverley shot it. Did Tucker or Wellwood? What a play by Coverley to wait till he got some people in front. And it may not have hit anybody in the way in. 6-5, Toronto leads. And the Canadians come from their own zone. And they don't make the play cleanly. Strike missed, passing the puck out. Now Koivu tapped it at center and knocked it down, heading for the leap net. It is in deep. The player was knocked down, so was Koivu. The play was made out. Here's Ryder again. Ryder hangs on. Koliakabo hurts. Slow getting up. Can't get up. He fell a second time. Koliakabo behind the net. The play goes by him. Koliakabo can't get back to the skates. And finally, the referee sees it and has to call the play. But Koliakabo is three or four times trying to get back up and could not get up. And remember, Koliakabo got hurt in New York and missed the game. What happens to him, I don't know. But he's playing with a bad ankle or a bad leg and missed the game because of it. Well, Koivu took him out on the first instance. And uh, he looks like he's in real pain there. And it wasn't a jarring, bone-crushing hit. It's just awkward. Here, let's have a look at it. That's Koivu. No penalty was called. I looked at the referee, and no sign was made. Koliakovo tried to get up Harry right after that and stumbled and fell. And he tried to get up again and fell. This is Koliakovo's most 73rd NHL game in his four years with the Leafs. So injuries have really plagued this young guy who has played some great hockey for the Leafs this year. So play is underway again. Toronto leads by a goal. And Propov got the puck for Sundin. Panikarovsky broken up. Two Canadians come out of the zone, but the Leafs are coming back to cover. It is fed into the zone by Picots, and that's going to be called back. We played 4.50 of the third period. What a game file you have tonight. <laughs> Let's file this game away, and it's not over yet. Kia Motors. Ryder, four points. Koivu. 15 points in his last eight games. And if you're a speed reader, you got the third one. Go ahead goal by Toronto. Was given to Wellwood. Here come the Canadians again. Harley and Sundin got assists on that goal. Hit Wellwood going to the net off the stick of Carberley. Now the Canadians try to tie it again. In along the boards and behind the net, Perrault got it quickly and got it ahead, but not out. Long shot from the line. Stopped by Oban. And Commissary has to hang on to it. Now shooting it in, looking for a change. Leafs dump at the center, and they come up on it. Here, in over the line. Pole dished it off. Shot around the net, and he went after it. And it's Randy Kwok to the Canadians. He cleared it down the ice. Johnson was bumped. Tried to get in there and was stopped. Johnson got the puck, fed it back to the blue line. Here's Sore. Can't get open for a shot, so he had to pass it off. Now the shot is deflected wide of the net. The Canadians come in on it, but it's Wellwood. Grabbing it, coming away, getting the puck out off the boards and down the ice inside the line, and Sore back. Nearing seven minutes of the third. It's moving along quickly now, folks. And the Leafs lead by just one goal. Canadians are moving up. They seem to have found their legs again. However, it's given away at the line, and there's Kilger. Back in over that Montreal line is White with Tucker. Kilger. After it again was Kilger, got it back. Stajan shot it ahead. The Canadians get it out to center ice, but that's all. White slams it back in for Toronto. Both teams changing on this hectic pace. 
And it's Stanchin taking the puck and taking a hit and getting the puck away again. Dandenault can't stop him. Steen takes it for Toronto and comes out. He turns back, looks for Stanchin behind the net. Stanchin, Dandenault can't stop him again. Throw it behind the goal a second time. And it's the Leafs taking over on the forecheck now. This is pure guts and glory here working for Toronto, but they don't get it. It is Ryder getting it down, but that's all. The Leafs get it at center again. Devereaux lost it, but there's McCabe. Hooked it up over that blue line again, and Montreal is back. Ryder, three goals on the game. Dumped it in for Koivu. Three assists on the Ryder goals. And now Koivu is knocked down. There's going to be a lead penalty. Pavel Kabina is going to get the penalty as he took Ryder, or uh, Koivu down. And when we come back, the Canadians, trailing by a goal, will be on the power play. Starts at 21.695. Kia, the power to surprise. 22 minutes. Beat that. You're on. Need more power? Get today's most innovative new mowers at the Home Depot. And now we've added Cub Cadet to our exclusive lineup of great brands, including the ingenious new zero turning radius mower. The Home Depot. You can do it, we can help. Good luck, buddy. Ultimate Rivalries, presented by Delicio, the pizza that rivals delivery. It's not delivery, it's Delicio. We asked you to vote for your ultimate player rivalry, and your answer was clear. Gordie Howe and Maurice Richard were two of the greatest players in league history. Their teams met four times in the Stanley Cup final, and they met annually at the top of the scoring race. Ultimate Rivalries, presented by Delisio. Pittsburgh Penguins are leading New York 2-0 right now. Mark Recchi has scored, but it won't matter if Ottawa can beat the Boston Bruins. They have a 6-3 lead with nine minutes to play. There's Patrick Eves with a 6-3 goal, a sixth on the year from Neil and Corvu. And there's Kubin in the penalty box, call for interfering on Koivu. And here comes the penalty. Koivu was going to get the puck, but didn't, never did touch it. Interference. They saw off, won by the Canadians. Sure, hand on it. Nearly set up a breakaway. He just got the puck away from the Leaf player who was rushing down Kilger. Slapped deep by the Leafs. 6-5 Leafs. Canadians power play moving up. Toronto with two power plays in the period to take the lead. Panic's got it back. Good chance. Shot. That's deflected off. High it goes. Again, sent back to Surrey at the blue line. A wrist shot. That's deflected high over the glass into the netting. And the faceoff is going to be, let's see, they haven't called it yet. Looks like they're coming near the blue line. It's just inside. Antropop tipped that shot from the point. And the, the forward that's given the assignment to take the shooting lane away from Sure, that's an awful tough assignment, the way he can shoot it. It is in the draw. His belly got that one ahead. Looked like it was going to be grabbed by the Leaf Steen. Now he does get it. Can't get it out by Surrey. Kept in by Markov. Surrey watches it go high over the glass. That was deflected up there, though. 8 10 gone in the third. Montreal, when they've led after two periods like they did here, have a record of 26 1 and 2. And the Leafs, who trailed after two, have a record of three, 25 and three. So strange things are happening tonight. Sundin on the penalty kill, won the faceoff. One ten left on this power play for the Canadians. They haven't been near Obey yet. Markov nearly got in one time, and now he'll bring it up to start this rush. Gave it away to Sundin. That was dangerous. Higgins got it, shot it deep for the Canadians. Ryder on it first, tipped it over in front of the goal. Koivu didn't get it, and it's cleared out. Markov can't get back. It's going to 
going to be Sundin. He's coming in. He's coming in. He shoots. And that's wide of the net. And the crowd will roar on the penalty call. It wasn't called. Ryder back up there for the Canadians. Got in over the line. The Leafs break it up. Can they clear it? Shot around the net. There goes Deverell. He got a stick on it. Couldn't get it out. The Taglia couldn't get it out. Deverell's away. Leafs are fighting hard now to protect that one goal lead. 22 seconds left in the penalty to Cabina. Devereaux up there making a good play back out of the Canadians grab it. Now they start out. Thomas Plakonitz goes through center. Lifts a high one in. Got it to the corner. That's Kovalev trying to find it. And he does. Kovalev brings it back out. Put on the brakes. Coming to the net with the pass. That came away off the stick of Plakonitz. Dumped it in. The penalty to the Leafs is done. They're at full strength again. They killed it off. And the Canadians, Laton Dress messed it up the line. Allowing just one shot, the Leaf penalty killers were superb that time. Hanging on to that one goal lead. Six to five. Ten minutes and 12 seconds left in regulation time. Moving up. Montreal dumped in by the deflection of Johnson. Johnson knocked it down again. Put it in deep around the net to nobody really, and Bonk saw it and went in after it. Center to Johnson, center again. The Leafs have it in front of their own goal and cannot clear it out. Kept in by Montreal, turning his bump. Long shot, 10 feet wide of the net. Bouillon shot it in around the goal to Johnson. He lost it, Dejan on it. Johnson has it, Dejan has it. They're on the board zone, the outside, no harm done there. And the Leafs keep him out there. Now it's cleared away off the boards by Tucker and out. 9.30 left in regulation. Canadians down a goal. Trying to get in there again, and Johnson comes up back with John Cole. Who knocked it loose, and it's White of the Maple Leafs getting it out to center. Commissary lost it. In comes Wellwood. Wellwood trying to make the play. Lost it against Bouillon, and the Canadians do not get it out. Kept in by Cabina. There's Wellwood tipping it behind the net. And the tag there, We've got the first goal. Dumped it up to the corner. Finally, Ryder gets it over. And comes away on the rush. Ryder coming in. He's looking back. Tossed it behind the net. Turning back for it was Perijokin. Ryder comes over to help. Knocked loose by Ryder. Ryder got a stick on it to the corner. Bumped in on the boards. And it's cleared out by Deborah. 840 left. What a game. What a game. Lots of goals. Lots of everything. No fights. Dumped in to the leave zone. High on the glass and down the ice it goes again. These two teams are fighting for their lives and giving it their all. No doubt about it. Everybody is working as the coaches wanted them to. Dodge Ram, the longest lasting, most durable line of full size pickups. So you're saying it would be better to have nobody here than to have me here? Yes. A mystery. Good. Triffy. Poor young Triffy, as she now is. Where everyone's a suspect. Christ help him. And a ranger. <laughs> Sherlock Holmes. Who's absolutely clueless. Maybe you should be there. Fred uh, Ewanick, Mary Walsh, Colin Mockery, Andrea Martin, Remy Jannar. Well, it can only get better from here. <laughs> young Triffy, a film by Mary Walsh, now playing. Looking for the right mortgage? Come to TD Canada Trust, where we'll help you find a mortgage that has everything you're looking for. Which could make all the difference. I'm so excited, and I just can't hide it. Get the mortgage that's right for you. TD Canada Trust. Banking can be this comfortable. Montreal had killed off 18 straight penalties till the third period. Then the high sticking play by Bejan gave the Leafs the power play and they scored to make it 
5-5. Then Koivu picked up a tripping penalty, and McCabe made him pay, or Coverley made him pay, and it is 6-5, and we're sitting with 8.21 to go. The Indians get the face off at the line and keep it in. That is what kind of time. Higgins going around the net. Turns the other way and trying to get away from Gill. Gill stopped him, poked it away from him, but the Canadian player is on it in the corner. Connors comes in to help. That's Higgins with the puck, but Connors was right there behind him. And moving up was Ostitsen. The rookie is after it. The Leafs poke it ahead. Steen got it out. Knocked away to center ice by Toronto and shoved up over the line by Devereaux. Striding in. He's got good speed, Devereaux has. Boy, was he nailed back there. Crowd one on one call there, but they're standing back now. The referees with under eight minutes left in regulation, and they're going at it, these players. They're going at it. Back up is Kovalev, and there's Ryder. Back hands it in around the boards as he was hit by Andrew Paul, and the Leafs get the puck and bring it out. Ponikarowski coming down through center as Andrew Paul the shot. That is stopped. Juggled, and the Canadians go the other way. Ryder up to there again. That's offside. He stalled at the line. Ryder took the shot. It was too late. It was offside. Let's visit Bruce now. He's got something on Koliakabo. Yes, Bob. Koliakabo in a moment. First, though, Sheldon Surrey of the Canadians just left the ice holding his stomach. We are told Surrey will not return from Montreal because of an upper body injury. They are continuing to work on Carlo Koliakabo in the Leaf Clinic. He left the ice putting no weight whatsoever on his right ankle. Don't fool it. He will return, Bob. Important defenseman for both teams out. Absolutely. And how long are they out for if either one of them make the playoffs? Gill coming up. That is dumped in over the line deep into the Montreal zone. One goal spread. That's not much of a spread, is it? 6 5 Toronto. Icing against Montreal. Well, the way this game's gone, you can't predict. Holy Akabo. Somehow is back on the ice. He did this the other night in New York, too, after it looked like he was finished. Third period differential. The Leafs minus 20. Goals for and against in third periods coming up till tonight. Holy Akabo has gone to the bench. He just came out, skated a circle or two, and left. Ryder got it in this time before an outside could be called. And the Leafs dump it out. They have a one goal lead. Remember now, Toronto has to win in regulation. A tie won't to do it for the Maple Leafs. They'll allow the Canadians that point. And the Leafs will be eliminated. I hope it's clear. The Islanders won today. 4-2. They beat Philly. They play New Jersey tomorrow. The Leafs and Canadians are playing tonight. Enough said, right? 6.35 left in the third. Face-off in the leave zone. Aubin is in goal for Toronto. Taking over from Andrew Raycroft. Toronto coming out with a one-goal lead to Tucker. Down across the line it goes, and the Leafs make another quick change. 6.22 to go. Canadians coming out. Backhanded before hitting center by Bouillon. And there goes Steen. Steen coming in, the shot on the short side. There was room there, but he missed the net. Azue had moved a little bit to the center of the goal. There goes Johnson without the helmet, rushing hard. Good hustle, but he didn't touch the puck. He says he did. The linesman says he didn't. That means the faceoff is back in the Montreal zone. No argument. None at all. Is here and the Home Depot can help you make the most of it from inspiration to installation build a new deck get a new barbecue or create a whole backyard paradise the Home Depot you can do it we can help you're Catherine right at the most powerful ad agency in New York don't ever speak to Mr. Hill directly something isn't quite right <gasps> she used to work here 
Her death was no accident. This Friday, we have a leak. If you think you know how it will end. Oh my God. Think again. What are you doing in this room? You've been manipulating this whole thing. Secrets are great, unless you get caught. Perfect Stranger. Opens everywhere Friday. Thanks, Ontario, for switching to Lakeport Pilsner, for making Lakeport Light the fastest growing light beer, and for making Lakeport Honey Lager the number one honey beer. We're still 2 4 for 2 4. Lakeport, great beer, fair prices. You ask for cans, and Lakeport delivers. Lakeport Pilsner, Lakeport Light, and Lakeport Honey Lager, now in cans for the lowest legal price. That's 10 bucks less a 2 4 than regular beer. Lakeport, Lakeport. great beer, fair prices. Montreal bench with a coach, and there's a player missing over there. Surrey, and here's where we think he got hurt. It's Sundin tried to go inside him and did his skate clip Surrey in the stomach or on the side. Sundin's skate comes up, and it looked like he kicked him on the side with the back of the skate, not on purpose. And Surrey is evidently not coming back. Wellwood, the go-ahead goal for the Leafs at 3.43 of this period on a power play. The Leafs started the period on two five-on-threes in a row. And they got a lead, 6-5, to five, with 5.45 remaining in regulation time. Robert back hands it ahead. Devereaux takes it and lost it in his own zone. Canadians keep it in at the blue line, Markov. Into Johnson. Johnson lost it, and McCabe takes over for Toronto. Didn't waste any time getting that one off the glass and down the ice, and Markov knew it and got back quickly. Devereaux was up there for Toronto. He passed through the middle, was a butte. And across the line, the Canadians, rookie. But he didn't get very far. Steeson lost it just inside the line, and then it was called with 5.16 left. Well, the Leafs wingers have to know that the Montreal defense will be pinching and they have to control the boards because the defensemen are going to be heavily forechecked and that may be the only play. Steen steals it. Coming in, no shot, so just shot it around the net. Leafs trying to run out the clock. There's a lot of it left. 5.03 to be exact as the puck is out of play again. And the Leafs have that one goal lead. Well, this has been one of the strangest games for as critical as it is to both teams. 11 goals, one period dominated by the Leafs, the next one by Montreal, and this one, Toronto scored twice, and Bonk's getting looked at on the bench. And the shots in the first period, Toronto 23 to 9. Montreal 14 8 in the second. It's only 4 3 Toronto here in the third so far. And McCabe gets the puck under control. And Paul dumps it in. Moving up on this side was Ponikorowski. Right away by Pekanitz. That's not out. Leaves shoot it wide of the net and just keep the pressure on Montreal by dumping it in there. Keeping the heat on. Canadians down the goal. Crowd behind their Maple Leafs, of course, here at the Canada Center. Boyu starts them off. And they get as far as center. It is dumped in, and there goes Kovalev. He's been almost absent tonight. Hasn't had very many chances. And he can be explosive. He's still on the ice. The Canadians were changing. And there's Koivu. Here's Kovalev. Now Kovalev. That shot went high off his stick as he made a clever move in front to get a shot away. But the Canadians need this guy to turn it up. Kovalev, who hasn't done much tonight, didn't do much in New York on Thursday night, and he can do what he wants to do out there. That's how good he is. It's a question, though. How much does he want to do it? Got a shot on goal in the game yet. He's still on the ice. Kovalev and Ryder. Moving up, Kovalev. Got it by Kovalev and out, and Markov had to get back. Monikarovsky was there with Antropov, and there. The shot by Sundin was high. Canadians get it out of the zone. Back in, 
a strike. Long pass gets down and ducked into the zone again, and there goes Ryder. He'll take a hit from Antropod to get the puck, and he can't do it. The Leafs don't clear. Now they will. Knocked down by Antropod, but up to Sundin again. Just rolls it in, and the Leafs are changing. 320 remaining in regulation time. A Leaf win, and they've got a shot at the playoffs, depending on the Islanders and their game tomorrow. Ties, no good for Toronto. A win, and the Canadians have that eighth spot, and they'll be in the playoffs. And they're on the attack. Fanning on that first pass was Parrish open. And again, trying to backhand it in, did this time around the net. Bach missed it, Tucker got it, and it's slashed down the ice by the Toronto Maple Leafs. However, it's going to be icy as Parrish Hogan was the first back with two minutes and 40 seconds remaining in the regulation time. Monday, CBC News presents live coverage of the dedication of the Canadian National Vimy Memorial from Vimy, France, in Ottawa, Ontario, built to recognize the sacrifices made by Canadian soldiers and for the victory achieved by Canadian troops at Vimy Ridge 90 years ago this month. And it is coming close, right in there, close was Higgins. Couldn't barge it through that crowd. Leafs gonna get it out. Pilger's pass was good, and it's played in by Paul. Leafs are playing it smart now, with 2.20 left. Canadians have to open up. That could be one of two things, successful or dangerous. The Leafs hanging on to it, McCabe dumps it out. It's like it's in the last minute the way the Leafs are playing. But there are still two minutes and three seconds left. Wow, what tension now. It's mounting. The building is buzzing. Can the Leafs hang on? Can the Canadians get a goal? A tie would be fine for Montreal. Hit at center ice goes unnoticed. It's kept in with 145 left in regulation, and the Canadians are trying to find it, but they won't. Cleared away by Steen and out the center. And Stajan knocked it in the rest of the way, and the Leafs are making rapid fire changes now. With a minute and a half left to play in regulation, the Canadians are coming up. Ducked into the zone, but it's going to be Toronto on a deep. But Bina ripped it. It's out again. Another icing call coming, though. 118, 116, 115 left in regulation time with a faceoff coming in the Leafs zone. And it's a one-goal game. Toronto is in front. And Montreal's taking a timeout, which is no surprise with a face-off in the Leaf zone. They will get the six skaters they want out there, and I'm sure the goalie will be watching from the bench. And Paul Maurice instructing his team what to do for sure if we lose the draw. If the Canadians can get a goal and tie the game, and it ends in a tie in regulation. Toronto was out. Canadians have a shot in overtime. And then it's up to the Islanders tomorrow in their game against the New Jersey Devils. Wow. What a night. One team was leading and was flying. That was Toronto in the early going. And then the Canadians stormed back. And they went ahead and were flying. And then, starting this third period after the three-goal burst by Ryder in the second, and a two-goal lead, two-man advantage for the Maple Leafs, and they got goals. Now, it's a one-goal lead, and the net down there to our left is wide open. Canadians have Uwe on the bench, and a sixth player on. And they have to pull out all the stops now and try to eliminate the Toronto Maple Leafs. And wouldn't they like to have Sore on the point? He's in the dressing room. They have Strike back there now. Here it comes, and the crowd is nervous. Strike shot, high, whistle wide, rebound. Higgins behind the net. Higgins trying to center it, trying to jam it out front. Knocked down in the corner was Chris Stinson. Kept in by the Canadians, and now swept out and a break. Empty net was up there for an entry probably didn't see it. Nor did uh, Ponikarovsky. Canadians get in it again. Kostichin after it, the rookie played it around the net, and the Leafs are going to clear it. 
got to the blue line and not out. Now it is. And a chance to end it right here at Rapov. And he couldn't get it by Markov. 38 seconds left. Canadians have to do some fancy dancing now. Ryder pass to the far side. The crowd going wild. Back in over the line for the Maple Leafs. And they'll get it out and down the ice. Listen to this crowd. They're all standing here at the Air Canada Center. The Leafs fighting for their lives and trying to get to that last playoff spot. A win tonight will help it. Then it depends on the New York Islanders tomorrow. They must win tomorrow to well, get in. Matt Sundin, I'm sure, will take the draw. He's been the best face-off man on either team tonight. The Leafs have called a timeout so Paul Maurice can get exactly the five skaters he wants on. Now this gives a rest for Montreal, but you can only worry about your own team under these circumstances. And they're getting their instructions right now. A Leaf win tonight would be great for Toronto, of course. But then they have to wait. If the Islanders win their game tomorrow in New Jersey. The Islanders are in. The only way a team here tonight can make the playoffs is if that team is Montreal with a victory. And they're looking to tie it right now to eliminate the Maple Leafs. I know that could be confusing, but there it is. A face-off deep in the league zone. Canadians with 20.5 seconds to tie. If they do, the Leafs are out. Canadian net is empty. Six attackers. Can they get a goal? Can the Leafs hang on? They have a chance. The Leafs win the draw. It's not a oh, And that's going to do it. Unless the Canadians can pull off a miracle here. Ten seconds left. No serve. A long shot in. Doesn't get in. The Leafs are going to win this game. Yes, they are. Especially by this Toronto team. Tough luck for the Canadians. They are gone. The Leafs are still alive. And the Islanders have it in their hands now tomorrow. There's a team meeting at 3.30 tomorrow. The Leafs are going to watch the Islanders play New Jersey to see if the season's over or if they will win by the Islanders losing and start off against Buffalo. A great effort by Toronto tonight hanging on for the win with a shots 35 to 28 for the Leafs and the uh, Leafs win it six to five and still have a chance. See you later. This portion of Hockey Night in Canada on CBC is brought to you by the Home Depot. You can do it. We can help. Why settle for an ordinary yard tractor when you could have a Husqvarna? Outstanding versatility makes them the ideal working companion all year round. Have a great experience. Raise your expectations. Visit your dealer today. Do you want me to spy? Good Shepherd is the godfather of CIA movies. The nasty little secrets. A masterpiece. Spellbinding. The best spy movie ever made. Be proud of what you've started. The Good Shepherd. On DVD now. Harvey's introduces the return of the Angus Burger. One big, juicy Angus beef patty covered in real Canadian cheddar. Crisp lettuce, juicy pickles, and fresh-cut tomatoes are on some other guy's uh, <clears throat> burger. Just ketchup and mustard. <laughs> that a boy, Gordo. Top just the way you like it. It's one of Canada's best-tasting burgers. Harvey's Angus Burger is back. Harvey's makes your hamburger a beautiful thing.
Who's counting on your brakes today? Your brakes are too important to trust to just anyone. Visit Midas for lifetime brake pads or shoes, just $49. Installation extra. We'll provide a written estimate and fully explain any additional work needed. Be safe. Just the Midas touch. Here later. Welcome to You Do Voodoo. We get thousands of orders online for cheating boyfriends, <laughs> business partners. Thing is, they're heat sense. No problem. We ship coast to coast. Coast to coast. Coast to coast. Cure Later's Canada's largest courier. Delivered by 9 a.m.? Overnight guarantee. When you ship with Pure Later, out of the ordinary is never out of the question. Pure Later, where business is going. Cole had it right. That is a gallant effort by those two teams. It looks sloppy, it looks strange, Don, but I was saying to you, when you've played playoff hockey since the All-Star break, they, they clearly were running on fumes. Matt Sundin, the MasterCard yeah. star number one. Coming up. And uh, he's right here with Bruce Rainey. Yeah, Bruce. right there. Ron and Don, thank you. Here is Matt's, and I guess more plot twists in that game than an episode of 24. Did you ever in your wildest dreams expect a game of this magnitude to feature 11 goals? <laughs> Not really. It was uh, one for the fans, for sure. Uh, one of those games, you know, the momentum switched back and forth. Obviously, a, a must game for both teams, and uh, we're very happy we came out on top of that game there. You know, you've played in Canada Cups, World Cups, Olympic gold medal games. The hype surrounding this, though, it was special today, wasn't it? It was awesome. I, I think when you're a professional athlete or any type of athlete, you, you dream about playing a type uh, game seven uh, game, and tonight was certainly that kind of a format, and uh, you, you can tell the fans were really behind this whole game, and that was kind of a six, the number six player out there for us. What are you most proud of tonight as captain as it pertains to your team? Uh, I'm, I'm very proud of the, the whole group, the way we battled through a lot of adversity right through the whole season so far, but I mean, this game, we were down and up a couple goals and down again, and, and uh, just stuck to our guns, and uh, we're able to pull it up. Do you guys chip in now for a fruit basket and send it to Lou Lamarillo and say, please play Marty Brodeur tomorrow? I mean, that's obviously the game you watch, isn't it, tomorrow? Yeah, I mean, we can't do anything more right now. It's out of our, out of our hands. Uh, it was really nice to, to win the game tonight, and now we have to cross our fingers for New Jersey to win the game tomorrow. Do you guys have a plan to watch that tomorrow? Uh, not yet. We haven't talked about it. We'll, we'll see what happens there. All right, Max, listen, thank you very much. Congrats on the win. Thank you very much. Okay, Ron, here's the Leafs captain. Thank you, Bruce. Not a good thing if he doesn't play Brodeur tomorrow. You have to be fair on this here. I remember I had the Boston Bruins. We were home free. We were doing, we couldn't lose and everything like that. And I played Cheevers and, and because you've got to be fair in that. And if he plays the other guy, that's not fair. Scott Clemenson, the word is about 98% now that they're leaning towards putting Lewis, of course, the coach, uh, they're putting Clemenson in. I would say, Don, like Brian yes. Burke was hot at Solani with the stick measurement because he needed to rest guys. You saw these two teams. They are absolutely out of gas I'm right now. I'm just saying it's not fair if mm -hmm. you don't go 100%. Also, say your guy brings his son to the game. Right. Say he brings him to the game. He plays 300 bucks the whole deal, and he wants to see Brodeur. It's not fair. That's all I'm saying. It's not fair, and he better play him. Or someday down the line, Lou will want a favor too. Now, there was – we got a little thing – Matt Sundin has been having a tough time. He was the first star tonight. Let, let's just see a little when Surrey got hurt. Watch him come back. He's almost like he's in, you'll see it. He's almost in cement coming back. But watch him come back. He gets knocked down, but he doesn't, he wants to, look at him come. I mean, Matt Sundin, look at that. Now he's coming back because he wants the guy to get on early to come back. That's pretty good. Now there was a little, what they have to do in the playoffs. There was a, some defense played here tonight. When they were up, by the way, the uh, Leafs come on in the third period. They had more hits in the third period than they had in the first two. If you don't hit, you're not going to win. But there was some defense played here, and this is what they have to do in the playoffs. Watch the, watch the guy. This is a trap. Perfect. This is the way you do it. Two guys back, one guy in. We got it a couple more times, I think. This is the way it should be. See that? They got the one guy back. Guy standing up. That's the way you got to do it when you're up. A, 
And I think we got one more, and I think Ian White is almost up there. He, the defense can stand up when the guys are coming back, and that's what they're going to have to do was, in the back. playoffs. You know, it's funny. Raycroft's probably sitting there like uh, all athletes thinking, oh, bang, he faced three shots in the third period. I'm yeah. the dummy here. Obang goes in, looks like the hero. Uh, that's what I said. He has not a hard shot. But maybe that's why the team picked it up because yeah. he was in there or something. Whatever it was, it was the right move because they won. Huge kudos to Maurice. Just like the, I said. At the the, uh, yes, you did say that you. the Leafs would win it. Although it looked a little shaky there until the Beijing, the double, uh, the five on three to start that third period was uh, yeah. unbelievably well, huge. Well, I'll tell you, the, the power play looked great. And McCabe and everybody's talking about him and wants to pull a bullet in his head and everything like that. But he looked pretty good tonight. By the way, the game's at 4 o'clock tomorrow. Uh, TSN. At, yes, TSN's TSN. got the broadcast. We're not afraid we'll to say We'll all be watching it. for yes. sure. Uh, here's the scores around the loop because Good. Calgary's obviously checking in on the Nashville-Colorado score. We do know that Ottawa's uh, secured home ice advantage for their series with Pittsburgh. That'll be our first telecast Wednesday night. Vancouver, as you saw this afternoon, perhaps on Hockey Night in Canada, a big 4-3 win. Uh, I hope he, the East is okay, boy. Yeah, Kevin Bieksa left with a walking cast, so we don't know if that's serious. We'll, we'll obviously try to get word on that tonight as he left San Jose in a cast. The Islanders with that 4-2 triumph, keeping their hopes alive. They have to win outright tomorrow. They cannot win uh, by getting a point. They have to have the two points in their game against New Jersey. Dublovitz, unbelievable. He's just... Uh, From the American Rush. League, there's yes. a lot of guys down there can play. Buffalo gets the uh, President's Trophy. Congratulations to Larry Quinn and the Buffalo Sabres. They were voted by ESPN hey. Magazine, the best organization, and they win... Connolly. Yeah, Tim Conley comes back, right. of course, yeah, and Derek Roy got his 20th, which is nice. A Finn Aganoff was on fire. So 2 nothing. the Buffalo Sabres, 113 points, 53 wins. They've got a game left tomorrow. Uh, Detroit's done. They also have 113 points. They'll win the West. There's seven teams in the West with 100 points, four in the East. What a war that's going to be. That's the thing, right? That's what Chris Bronger said. You don't realize in the West you play that grueling set of series, and by the time you get East, it's tough. Ottawa there with that... Danny Heatley, back-to-back 50-goal -back seasons. First guy since Pavel Burry in 0 and 01. Hey, look out for everybody. Spence is starting to shoot. Carolina got back in this game. It was 4-1 Florida. Florida just owns Tampa. How about Boyd, mister? Got another goal. That's 12. You like him. Yes, yeah, sir. 23. they got tons of kids playing well right now. Atlanta's back in this one. It was 2-1 Tampa through 40, and it looks like Kozlov's tied it. You hear that Kovalchuk and Hartley don't get along? He really rides him. Huh? Well, whatever he's doing, he's first place. He's doing all right. Yeah. Should ride him. How about Kovalev tonight for Montreal? Oh my goodness, what a dog. Anaheim wins 4-3. They'd already secured their Pacific Division title when the Sharks were beaten by Vancouver. I love that Penner and Getzlaff play. Brees Galoff has really been sharp. You may have heard uh, Jay Shiger had to leave. His uh, son is not well, so he went home to take care of that and get ready for the playoffs. Pittsburgh 2-1. to uh, Rangers, I didn't see, is that the third? I didn't see what point in the game it was. Minnesota has a 3-1 lead over the St. Louis Blues. Nicholas Backstrom leads both in goals against and in a save percentage in the NHL. They won't quit Colorado, eh? Joel Quinwell, we won't let them quit. It's kind of like a party in Toronto right now. Reminds me of the Stanley Cup We won Cup the playoffs. Stanley Cup. Yes. We won the Stanley Cup. That's a scene outside Union Station as fans file out of the Air Canada Centre. Jubilation for the home side. Toronto 6, Montreal 5. More on Hockey Night in Canada. You know. Get our best price ever on this top grain leather seating reclining sofa during the reclining sofa sale at The Brick. For limited time, it's only $9.99. Plus, you don't pay for 15 months. For reclining sofas, nobody beats The Brick. Don't let the good times pass you by. Get it in gear at Mazda's Get It In Gear sales event with incredibly low purchase financing and lease offers on Mazda 3, Mazda 5, and the Mazda 6 family. Plus, the first payments on us when you lease or finance any new Mazda. Get it in gear. First payments on us. See your dealer today. How can I help you folks? Our car actually broke down. David, is that this room? I think it is. See. Everywhere April 20th. Enterprise rent a car for my trip. Looks expensive. It's not expensive, Ma. They pick us up. Sounds expensive. Pickup's free, Ma. Well, if it's not expensive, why didn't you rent me a bigger car? Big Enterprise. Remarkable reenactment, seeing the Great War 
through the eyes of their ancestors, reliving the drama and the glory. A spellbinding two-part documentary by Brian McKenna. The Great War. Sunday night at 8. All part of the live return to Vimy Weekend on CBC Television. The Los Angeles Times, The New York Times, Rolling Stone, and Time Magazine are all talking. Shooter is a crowd-pleasing thriller with a ton of white-knuckle action. Mark Wahlberg hits the target. I didn't start it, but I mean to see it through. Shooter, now playing everywhere. This junior chicken's pretty tasty. It's got a nice kind of spice to it. I think it's paisley. It's not paisley. How do you know? Because paisley is a pattern on shirts and other textiles. Oh, right. You were thinking parsley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Parsley, that's the one. Yeah, it's not parsley. The Junior Chicken. It's got people talking. Just $1.39 any day you want it. Part of our value picks menu. The critics are calling the number one movie in America hysterical. Do you really mean that? Yes, I think so. No. <laughs> Yes, I do. We're talking belly laughs. Go ahead, drink it in. Point to glory. Now playing. Think hockey. Brought to you by the Home Depot. You can do it. We can help. Tonight on Think Hockey, Rob Cookson of the Calgary Flames. We're discussing how Matt Lombardi is one of the sneakiest forwards on the attack. If you can't beat that uh, defenseman one-on-one, -on -one, get to the net. You're going to have to cut back and buy time and space. We'll show you how when we come back. Lombardi flies down the wing, takes the pass and escapes to the net, scores! <laughs> 22 minutes. Beat that. You're on. Need more power? Get today's most innovative new mowers at the Home Depot. And now we've added Cub Cadet to our exclusive lineup of great brands, including the ingenious new zero turning radius mower. The Home Depot. You can do it. We can help. Good luck, buddy. So now, Rob, here's a fundamental that's absolutely vital to hockey. This is the ability to read that you can't beat that defenseman. We're really working little two-on-ones here. But obviously, the forward can't get by that defender, dry, far post. So they're now taking this opportunity to buy time and space. How are they doing it? Yeah, the whole objective here, Ron, again, is that we've gained the puck. We've gained the zone under control. We want to maintain puck possession. If we can't get to the net right away, then we want to buy time and space by turning away from the uh, checking pressure, creating time and space so that we can uh, allow ourselves that opportunity to make a play. Again, if we make that delay, we still be, should be thinking about going to the net off the delay. And again, if that's cut off, then we're cycling puck low, and our teammate is reading those options, and he's getting into position to support uh, down low. Again, it's a, it's a cycle situation, off the rush, give and go, go to the net. And when you make this cut to the boards, watch this now, it's really important to pick up your feet and go. Yeah. Go, 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 because yeah. the defense is going to be on you. All defensemen are told, stop up and close the gap. And again, so if you're the puck carrier, you got to create some time and space to make the play. And again, your teammate has to understand that and support down low or support going to the net. cbc.ca slash thinkhockey for more. Rob Cookson, huge contributor to World Junior Gold and the Salt Lake City Gold for Team Canada. His Calgary Flames getting set for Edmonton. Our Kia Fantasy Pool, your chance to win a Rondo will conclude tomorrow night. Our weekly leader is Andrea Elliott of Fort Hope, Ontario. 79 points. Marty Brodeur was the big hero for her in net. And Yaramir Yager offensively led the way along with Flames center Damon Lanko, who had two goals and three assists this week for seven fantasy points. The overall lead is Irene Strakuza of Ottawa. And she relied on... Henrik Lundqvist and Thomas Caberle. Caberle was her top offensive threat with 5.7 points. So, Irene, you're in the lead overall. We'll announce the winner on Wednesday. The Toronto Maple Leafs breathe life into their chances for a playoff berth. Tomorrow they'll watch the Devils and the